looking for what comes next, for that moment when everything finally... One minute! Whichever path you choose, it starts here. Max Gear is a high-performance synthetic gear oil designed to provide maximum protection to heavily loaded gear. Its slippery synthetic molecules and center look additive package not only reduce wear, they virtually eliminate both gear and bearing wear. We run a thousand horsepower through our transmission and differential all season long and never have a problem. Eliminate a variable, drift with Royal Purple Max Gear. Poor purple, Royal Purple. You can find Max Gear at O'Reilly Auto Parts. モータースポーツで得た高度な技術すべてのレイズホイール一本に込める魂永遠に変わらないビヨンドザレボリューションザ・コンセプトイズ・レーシング NGK and NTK is more than just high ignitability spark plugs and precision sensors. They're about growing the car community. This is why they're introducing Shop Squad, an automotive meeting place for shop owners, service writers, technicians, students, and industry professionals to come together and share knowledge and encourage self growth. Enrolling is free, and you have access to on demand training, digital newsletters, product launch information, and more. Woo! as it is a beautiful day here on the streets of Long Beach. That's right, we are back at it like a track addict. 21 years, Formula Drift has been putting smiles on faces. It began in 2004 in Atlanta, four rounds, and some of those rounds still do exist, including Atlanta. It's gonna be round two this year. We go back to Irwindale. Uh, I mean, I'm just excited to be here. This is round one of eight. We'll find out who will be our 2024 champion. Not too far from here, but it's gonna culminate in October. Actually, my birthday weekend. I'm Jared Deanne, I'm your host next to me and joining me the entirety of this season, Mr. Jacob Gettens, wearing the toque, the beanie, the, 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 the what do you, what do you, uh, what do you like? You like toque. Yeah, toque. I go with toque. I mean, you know, I can go back and forth. It's fine. Yeah. All right, that's yeah, I'm, I'm hat fluid. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, again, this is the Type S Streets of Long Beach presented by Type S. So uh, be sure to follow Type S. I'm doing an Instagram takeover, giving away some power power, as I like to call it. It's a mic power jump pack, so ah. power power, all the power. Power squared. Um, again, Jared Deanne, Jacob Gettens. Through ProSpec, we'll have Matt Sopa join us up here for the four ProSpec rounds within the eight rounds. But we made history yesterday, Jacob. 
new qualifying format. I think it worked out. We saw Manoa, 14 years old, get the victory last night. Shanahan is in the building. Some arguably say some of the, you know one of the best drifters in the world. Um, and then Adam LZ, you know, he's in a BMW. Look at look at the variety we saw yesterday. And you know, we talked about it at dinner with with our crew, my buddy Kemp and stuff. And like, yeah, they're hyped. Yeah. But it's to get 25th. <laughs> but it just adds that another layer or level of, uh, of driving prowess. Yeah, we had a lot of questions coming into this, and so many things got answered. We didn't know how Shanahan was going to do. We didn't know how Manoa was going to do. Adam's finally back in the BMW. How's yeah. he going to do? And we got those answers, and it's, it's incredible to see how this all played out. You talk about Adam. Let's talk about, uh, you know, Adam LZ. And, uh, and this, is, this is Shanahan here who, you know, stepped in behind the wheel of Rome RCP's BMW, give Modern's hell. I don't know if he still has that sticker on the back because, well, I guess Rome went to Modern, right? So he's saying, well, I'm going to go join hell. I'm going to go get over here. So, uh, you know, talking about him, Diego Higa, what great drive we saw from him. But uh, Adam LZ and Sean Shanahan, you talk about a lot of expectations for him, and he delivered, man. Yeah, both drivers did incredibly well. And, you know, there were so many comments over the years of like, oh, Adam's got to get in the BMW and do this. We, and we saw how well he drove there. I mean, it, it's it's nuts. And the crazy thing is, we could see battles like this again back over in Europe, and then they come back here, yeah. and this could go back and forth for the entire year, which is is crazy. Yeah, these guys are, are really busy. You know, they're not putting their they're not putting the cars in their in their luggage, but uh, they got cars all over the world. It's really cool. And then this guy, Manoa, Haroya Manoa, shows up. Juke Racing, brand new car, new build, 14 years old. He said he did 10,000 laps on the streets of Long Beach on his sim. I believe it, and you can see it in his driving. I mean, he's touching the walls. It, it's like he's been, it's like he was molded into that car. Yep. And we're seeing this with these young drivers where they're spending so much time in the sim that they get in the car and like, oh yeah, I already know what I'm doing. And that's what we saw here, taking the win, absolutely crushing it. And now he's he gets to move into an, his first battles with Dylan Hughes. So welcome to the big leagues. Yeah, that's that's going to be a good one. I mean, it's anybody's game here today, but these are the seeding results. So again, we lock in the 24. And then we backfill with the eight from yesterday's action. So we had a 16 bracket. Once you got to the eight, you're locked and loaded. As far as the seeding results, it's about position, it's about posturing. So, hey, this is the GoPro recap from yesterday. If you're here in the building, be sure to stop by the GoPro booth, check it out. We got, uh, we're gonna save you some money and give you a, a nice uh, pack. And we're giving one away at two o'clock. So uh, taking a look, riding shotgun there with the GoPro on Manoa's car. Look at that. Oh, man. Great just shot. So close to the walls. And I mean, you can really see here how close this tandem gets. <laughs> <laughs> it gets Bang real close. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing to see even just the stability in the front wheel, how confident he is, how he's using the car to get in there. I mean, these angles are incredible. It's amazing, amazing that these uh, these GoPros hang in there, too. They, they don't think they get beaten throughout the, uh, the entire event. That was sick, man. That was a. That was a really, really good shot right there. I love it. So thank you to GoPro for their support. There we are riding shotgun with Adam LZ and his, again, BMW. And uh, he's trying to stick it to, uh, to Manoa right there. So again, please uh, come by. Come by the GoPro booth. Uh, we got discounted on the new Hero 12 Black. We got a, a bundle worth 200 bucks, only available here at Formula Drift. So if you're in the market for one, go, pi go buy the GoPro booth at 2 o'clock, and uh, we're giving one away as well. Um, there's been some rule changes. You said it yesterday, and I, I, that was news to me. Six pages, gone. gone. It's That's the it. meme, like, it's Friday, I'm out. Oh, yeah. Monday, got to pick it back up. Yeah, but, uh. it's 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 great. I mean, honestly, I agree, I agree with all of it. Um, the biggest thing is essentially zeros and incompletes are gone. Yeah. So you basically, you just have to spin the car all the way around to zero out. But the, the biggest thing, chatting with the drivers, that means even if you see a large correction in front of you, you've got to stay in tandem. You've got to stay on the door of that driver. Um, you know, even straightening. You've got two seconds to get the car reinitiated back into drift. So this also ties in with the fact that there's no more protests. Yeah. So that's it. Judge's decision is final. There is a there is a provision after the event. You can apply, do some paperwork, and do that. But uh, yeah, uh, it's it's great. And then a new standard for one more time. Essentially, the battle has to be an 85-point run for it to actually qualify for a one more time. If it's just a really bad battle, we don't want to see that again. So it diverts then to the lead run. Whoever had a better lead run is the one that goes through. Um, and then, yeah, but more judging, less zeros. I, and, I like, and I like that. I think it, it obviously puts more stress on the judges, but it's as far as show flow, it's going to help out consistency, get us out there, really challenge judges. And we had this conversation with, the, again, it was with the, the live stream crew. They said, all right, well, uh, hey, snowboard run. You know what? We think you could do better. Go ahead and do that again. Yeah. That doesn't happen in any other sport, <laughs> but that's what's unique about drifting. I mean, you know, people, you know, you love it or you, you don't because you're crazy. But yeah. anyways, drifting.
Drift Wizard's in the building. Look, at he's been bestowed I by know. the Drift Wizard. Look, at I, he didn't come in with a beard. They put that on, and now that beard grew. <laughs> That's what happens. Be careful when you get one. Uh, we got some new judges. We do have the four judging rotating format. So come to us from Netherlands. A new judge for us, but has been traveling the world. Vernon, just going to keep it simple, like Prince, Madonna. He's just V, big V, big VZ over there. And then uh, Brian Eggert rejoins us once again. And then uh, Reese Marin representing the East Coast, baby, and, and Columbia. I mean, he's all over the place as well. And then Robin Sheeta is sitting next to them to uh, take a look at replays and work, work the knobs there. Um, but again, they will be rotating throughout the entirety of the season. Four judges, eight rounds, do the math, everybody will judge. All right, so taking a look at this breakdown here, um, one notable thing here is Von Gittin Jr. He is registered as a driver, but he is not competing today. Um, what else are you looking at here? Travis Reeder. So um, if you guys saw Travis not yep. competing this year, um, I'll let him speak to his own words on that. So Brandon Sorensen is going to get a buy run. Because the drivers are registered, they were you know more or less supposed to be here on yep. the roster, they still have to run their actual laps. So if you see buy run on there, then they don't have to. But because the driver is in the bracket, technically, they do have to run it. Yep. And uh, it, yeah, you, you bring that up. So. Yeah, there's, there's a few things as they unfold. We will elaborate on them, but uh, we got a top 32. We are ready to go, and I, I'm excited for it. So, again, oh, that's what I was going to say is, oh, gutted, man. My man Ben Hobson there, he got eliminated. It was, it was, a, it was a cable, a throttle cable, man, yeah. that took him out. He lost power, tries to go fix it, has the five-minute allotment. I saw Ryan Siege, president of Form the Drift, and Vaughn Kitten Jr. elaborate talk about that. It was like seconds. It was just down to seconds, but rules are rules. So uh, Ben Hobson, he's gutted, but uh, hey, Lorette Nichols in the building. Lorette's joining us here once again. As uh, she, Yeah, let's, you know what, Lorette, you look great. I just saw you. I saw you and Odie talking. What, what's cooking? Well, guess what just happened? My wire just popped out of my IFB. Um, so, guys, we are going to see Odie Bakchis go against Jeff Jones in the first battle. And I'm so excited. I had a few minutes to chat with him. And, of course, we're here at the opening round of Long Beach. And um, for Odie, yeah. He's definitely focusing on the win, um, but he's looking at the bigger picture, and he said that he's organizing himself, his results, and his trailer for the future. And he also said, I don't care that he's ranked number one. Those words coming out of Odie's mouth because he said, basically, everyone comes into the 2024 season with something brand new, and he knows that he has to match or better the upgrades in order to succeed. So it is a clean slate for everyone, and we are having a great time down here in the hot pits. Thank you so much, Lorette Nickel. Great smile, great attitude. So happy to have you here. Thank you so much, Lorette Nichols. We are getting excited for our top 32. So I saw her talking to Odie, getting some inside communique. And uh, Jacob, what, what, are, what are your expectations for this season, man? I mean, just seeing all these new drivers, what, what's going through your mind? Yeah, I mean, we've seen a lot of upgrades in the cars. I, I spent a lot of the week just snooping in pits and seeing what's going on. There's a lot of really interesting things drivers are trying out. Um, but what I am excited for is this, is the drivers that are moving up from pro spec. A bit of a rough day from them. Uh, Rudy Hansen was the only one that actually made it into the show today. But Dmitry Brutsky, I mean, Connor Shanahan is your first battle, real tough. Andy Haitley had a good set of battles, some weird mechanical things yeah. going on. Ben Hobson, big crash, you know, makes things difficult. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it'll be good. And, and Derek Madison, big smile, big hair, big, you know. Big, <laughs> big flow. Yeah, big flow. Big attitude. And you know what? He's currently driving his little, his little, his little pro spec his car. His pro spec car. He, he, we, need, we need that pro car. Come on, D-Mads. So uh, hopefully he brings his widow waddle down out uh, to, uh, to Atlanta, and yeah. uh, he's going to throw down for his town, which is St. Louis. Um, title contenders, you know, a lot of eyeballs on people like Matt Field, people like Ryan Turk, you know, Odie Bakshis. But, you know, it all begins here. You can't. You know, actually, you can win a championship without winning an event. Talk <laughs> to Chris Forsberg about that. 2024 season, we kick things off here. Obviously, we move on to Atlanta, my favorite round. No disrespect to any of the other uh, stops, but I love Atlanta. O-Town, E-Town, St. Louis, Seattle, Grantsville, Utah, just outside of Salt Lake City. And finally, just down the freeway from here, um, probably an hour as the crow flies, but you know, about three hours on a Friday. So, <laughs> uh, October 18th, 19th, we'll find out who will be our 2024 pro champion. And also within that Utah, we got prospect champion. Um, right, title contenders, field, Odie, Tur just a lot of eyeballs on them. You know, yeah. it's just kind of always a bridesmaid, never a bride. I mean, who, who you placing your bets on? If, if you do, you know, scan to sign up. I, I don't know. I mean, I've heard a lot of votes for Osbo this year as a good comeback. I really want to see Simon Olsen make it into that. I yeah. Mean, 
He's crushing it. I what think a good Turk formula, like him yeah. and that car coming oh, together. Man, looks great in practice too. I think Turk is super due. Okay. I mean, one of, one of the greatest to, to never win a championship. Always the bridesmaid. Yep. But uh, yeah, it could Hold be my anybody. flowers. Could be. Hold could my be flowers. Anybody. Hold my flowers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, again, place your bets. If uh, if you're a bet man, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it ends up. So you can do that the entire of the season. We're ready to go. Throw them in the uh, in the burnout box. Also, Chris Yule, Pat G two, P P two, G two. P are you P three C three C three P O C three C three P. Let's go. There we go. All right. So uh, you can see here is the layout and the breakdown. D cell areas. Yeah. So you've got a big D cell obviously going into initiation. You're allowed essentially two moves for that. Um, outer zone one, outer zone two, extend that out, get really deep into outer zone three. There is a quick touch and go. Some drivers were kind of forgetting about yesterday, but you are allowed to decel and then back on throttle as you kind of hit the apex of the inside clip. And then um, it's about a 15, 20 foot run to the finish line. So should still be in drift at that point. Um, I mean, some areas that guys were troubled with were just, just hitting bumpers a little bit too hard. Yeah. So yeah. All right, well, again, thank you so much, Jacob. We're bringing in once again, Lorette Nickel is with RCP, Rome Sharpentier. We were just talking about the undertaking that you have done for 2024 and how this last minute deal came together. Uh, there's some work being hap uh, that's happening on Connor's car. What's happening? Uh, so they're just trying to put it back together. Yesterday, he pushed it super, super hard, and the battles were very fierce, especially in that, that new like seating bracket, which is I think is way better than the qualifying, so it's awesome. But the guys are just trying to put all the car back together, get all the body panels on so it looks like an E36 again. Uh, they, he feels like there's a misfire down low, so they're trying to check that out, see what's going on on the engine. On my car, the guys are putting the back half of that together because we blew that off also in practice. So right now, we're trying to manage two cars. Uh, it was a very short time frame, so we don't really have all the spares we need, but we're going to make it happen, and they always put it back together. Rome, thank you so much. One of the best attitudes down here in the hot pits, guys. Absolutely. And, you know, what's really cool about that is Rome, he knows the car is proven. Connor goes in there, proves that it is capable machine at the uh, at the hands of, obviously, a, dr a Drift Masters champion. Um, a fairly equal match here. These guys are out for it. it uh, Dude, it could be anybody that could win here in Long Beach. I mean, the the Widowmaker. This this track, we should. Brian Eggert was saying this should be called the Gauntlet. I mean, Judge, Jury, and Executioner, baby. Long Beach does not feel apologetic at all. Here we go. Our first battle of 2024 season. Odie Bocci's and Jeff Jones. Let's send it. Here we go. Odie Bocci's field suspension. S15 goes and initiates. Here comes Jeff Jones into view. Jeff could be a little closer. Massive angle there from Odie Bocci's. He backs it in. Taps that back bumper. Gets. Jeff's got really good proximity. You see that shimming there, though? That's going to reflect negatively on him as he goes into that last outside, inside clipping point. A little touch and go. And that big drift energy brings it on home. So Odie Bakshis leads. Really good angle going to outside zone one, coming into view with the naked eye. And then under the bridge, you saw Jeff Jones a little bit of wavering there. Yeah, so Odie comes in real hot. His, his ability to launch off the line seems to be getting better and better with every run. And then he catches that wall pretty well. Does pull a little bit of angle out of the car. Gets Jeff to hesitate a bit when that happens. Then you see Jeff start reeling him in as Odie gets really deep into outside zone three. Into the touch and go, you see the smoke stop. Jeff doing a good job pulling a little bit of angle out to be able to get through there. But uh, it was a great job from both drivers. Odie just maybe a touch too deep in outside zone one. You can see right there, it does cause him to lose a bit of angle, which means that into outside zone two, he's a little bit late. Now he's able to correct it. Very expert move there into three. Touch and go, inner clip, looks good. Jeff had a good chase. I mean, he did have to react to that uh, hard hit. But outside of that, I mean, I, I really didn't see any massive, massive issues with Jeff's chase. No, it, just like I said, just that kind of not not mimicking that angle exactly and just a little bit of hiccups here and there. Yeah. But uh, Jeff, I think he's gonna, he's got the fresh air, that evil automotive, uh, those that shop out in Redlands. Jeff made a move, him and his wife. Moved uh, closer out there and uh, excited to see what Jeff has got for us this season. But Odie Bach, he, he went hard on the wall. Was it him that went the hard yesterday with, uh, behind Rudy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a good hit. He backed so. it in, but still, I mean, <laughs> like I said, these walls, no, they don't, they don't feel bad at all. All right. Once those lights extinguish, you can see on either side the Type S lights. And once they extinguish, ready to go. That starts your cane. Matching them up so it's not a drag race to initiation. Across the nose of Odie Box, he's goes Jeff Jones. Slides it on in that first outside zone. Jeff, I told you, a lot more comfortable. A snappy transition. Odie Box, he's pounding with it right there, right as he transitioned. That was some magician wizardry right there. He needs the trip wizard hat. Now, that last inside clip. 
got to tell you, Odie Bakshi, he just, he's just Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You know, out of the car, oh, golly gee, and then just like, rawr, just the claws you can see come out. That transition, you saw how yeah. he's immediately there. Yeah, so taking a look at our replay now. So Jeff with a bit of a swing as he get into initiation. Good line there, small hesitation, does a phenomenal job through outside zone one, but then does not get nearly deep enough in outside zone two. Three gets things wrangled back in. Odie keeping, you know, six foot, seven foot gap in between them and then starts to reel it in right there. Um, Odie able to get the car back into angle. So a couple things that I'm looking at with it is De Jeff did have a better outside zone one. I think that's pretty clear. But outside zone two was essentially missed, you know, by the standards that we've got now. Um, so then it's going to come down to outside zone three and then into our touch and go. Odie's chase, pretty similar. So I think the judges are going to have to go down to, you know, what mistake was worse? Was it Odie going a little bit too aggressive in one and being, you know, missing part of two? Or is it Jeff missing almost all of two? Um, so yep. it'll, be, it'll be tough. That's where the needles bounce around. Here we go, slide him left for Odie Box. He's a right for Jeff Jones and Odie Bakshi gets the win. That's why I say just in 32, just like that, it can uh, it can end very quickly. But again, great effort by Jeff Jones. Such a great attitude. You win before you show up. And that gentleman is having a lot of fun. He's winning before he shows up. So congratulations to Odie Bakshi. Jeff Jones. We'll see you in Atlanta, buddy. Again, with that signature smile on your face. All right, here we go. A couple young. So right now, this is... So technically it's not a buy run. Travis Reeder was scheduled to be here. Um, unfortunately, he, he he said, I'm foregoing this season, but it's not goodbye. It's see you later. Again, love Reeder. He did a good, really good job. Go to his Instagram and his social media. He had a podcast and explained uh, what transpired. But right now it's Brandon Sorensen, the young buck from Las Vegas, high flying, soaring Brandon Sorensen in that United States Air Force BMW. So he gets an automatic advancement. He'll be going against Odie Bocci. Let's lay out and listen to this weapon of mass destruction. United States Air Force BMW. Maybe and there it is, Brandon Sorensen. There's the uh, the machine, the three-time back-to-back-to-back champion. Behind the wheel was RTR. That dude, man, he is a uh, he's had he's he's had an exciting. Uh, Exciting few months. Let's throw it down to the right nickel who's with James Dean. Can you shoot that right there? All right, looks like. Look at the yeah, look 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 at this. Look at that door. Look at the flambe door there. That that so if you haven't seen it on Tuesday, we have Media Day because next weekend, thank you to the Tanakas, thank you to the Grand Long Beach Grand Prix Association. Uh, we're gonna be doing drifting Friday and Saturday. Watch this, ready? And James Dean leading RCP, boom. So what I understand, look at watch these flames. It's crazy. Our boy Kevin Darwish, fortunately he was riding shotgun. He is a Canadian drifter, he's a drifter himself, so he knew how to get out of the seat very quickly. I mean, this thing caught fire so quick, and it burned really hot because it it exposed a nitrous line. Yeah. So that's why it burned, and it melted. It melted the manifold. Yeah. Like that's how hot it got. So you know, hats off to RTR and their team. I mean, if you can backtrack to October when James Dean went on a wall ride, you know, broke his collarbone, ended up getting on the podium, uh, insane. And then now fast forward here to round one. Crazy turn of events for James Dean, but he is hence the machine. I'll yeah, be it, back. It, Dylan Hughes and Manoa. Uh, this gentleman, this young man, 14 years old, Manoa, wins yesterday seating brackets. More bragging rights, more to get in the show, but more seat time. So it might benefit him. Like I said, the quote is 10,000 laps on this track in a simulator. But guess what? The dozer. Uh, when push comes shove, the dozer can push around. That royal purple BMW. Here we go. All right, there goes Dylan Dozer. He's out that first outside zone. Manoa tucks in. Now in that second. Oh, Manoa, a little bit of a mistake there. You saw a little correction there as Dylan Dozer Hughes on the GT radial tires, transitions back onto the inside clip. Manoa backs off. He dives in on the inside, so maybe got disrupted there. But Dylan the Dozer Hughes puts it down. So again, that 2J powered BMW of Dylan Hughes. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so Dylan, um, straight line initiation, big e-brake pull to get the car out. Gets on throttle quite well. Outside zone one looks good. Touches the bumper there, just misses his bumper on outside zone two. And then we did see some hesitation, a small correction from Manoa in the chase in a couple of occasions. This is another spot where he dove in a little bit too early and caught the front end of the car. So 
we watch here for the chase, Manoa doing a really good job, transitions perfectly in time, but then realizes he doesn't have the same bite and has to get back on the throttle, scrubbing some angle out, and then sort of fights to get settled again through outside zone three. And as we come through here, you can see that dive. Now, he gets on the brakes really quick, so he doesn't plow into the side of the dozer, but uh, yeah, a couple of, couple of mistakes, nothing crazy, but it, it, you know, it could play into what the, the judge's decision is after we see this next battle. All right, so let's see how it transpires. Seen some of the drivers watching. Seen a no back down there. Shanahan, Simon also there watching their other competitors, seeing what's going on, seeing the lay of the land. You know, sometimes drivers will never have been here before, and then they go in and throw, and throw it down here at this uh, unforgiving track. Hey, shout out to Sean and Jet Neff in the building. I see you guys are here. Thank you for joining us. The Neffs. So Eric Kendrick, uh, recently on the Chargers. Now he's over in the Dallas Cowboys. He was the Accelerate nice. and Woody in their program. So got a, got a bunch of VIPs in the building. Stoked uh, we could get a variety of people out here. So here we go. Manoa will now lead. Arroyo Manoa. Dylan Hughes will chase him down. Like you said, you saw those minimal corrections from Manoa. Got into the side of the dozer. But now I feel like he's going to push back. Here comes Manoa and Juku racing, 86. Now initiating in that first outside zone. Here goes Manoa. Good angle. He does use all the course. I think Dozer, watch, watch, watch Dylan. He's going to surge right here. There he goes, that third outside zone. That that right there is, that, you know, that's experience. That's, that's Dylan knowing what he needs to do here in Long Beach. You know, maybe dial it back a little bit and then attack going under the bridge in outside zone three, giving yourself a little bit of a buffer, safety net, because here's Manoa, who's new to FD, obviously not, not new to drifting, 14 years old. What were I, what was I doing when I was 14? I don't know. I wasn't doing this, that's for no. sure. No. <laughs> yeah, so super stoked. Let's take a look at it again. I love how Dylan basically mimics the exact same initiation that Manoa's got. Goes actually a little bit deeper than Manoa, causing him to fall back a little bit. Now Manoa in the lead, touches the bumper on both of our first two outside zones. Dylan grabs onto it a little bit more, goes even deeper than Manoa does in the chase, which is wild. Does cause him to catch up a little bit. I mean, this is a tough one. This is definitely a tough. Both runs were incredible. Both uh, both runs were, you know, over an 85, if you will. We're going back to the old qualifying standard. So this is something that could qualify for a one more time if the judges can't decide. So you do see there that Dylan did have a, a, a decent correction because he dove in and had the back end touch the wall harder than Manoa did. But I mean, really, Hero was was touching the wall anywhere that he could. Look at this. There's Manoa's team, Jerry Yang, and the. The guys, there's uh, there's our judges. See Reese Man. Reese, hold your hand up. Oh, there we go. Look at this. Look at this group. group All huddled here. up. I love yeah, the camaraderie, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, guys, grab a knee. Here's your orange slices. And like I said yesterday, hold my juice box. Hold He's 14 juice. years old. Yeah, you had to go to school in between events, between FDJ and then over here, you had to do one day of school. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, the stats are saying that uh, Manoa, 53%, Hughes, 21%. Let's take a look at our Air Force replay. Side by side. Yeah, so I mean, if, if we can't really decide, the judges are really gonna start to dive into what the lead run looks like. And I do think Manoa's got a bit of an advantage there, uh, but they both had some mistakes in the chase. Uh, it's, you know, Manoa was not as aggressive and that's what caused the problem. And Dylan was overly aggressive and that's what caused the problem. So we have to find the balance in between the two, but not easy, that is for sure. I, yeah. Don't, I really don't know which way to go on this one. Right. I, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think I could choose. I think so? I think I could choose, yeah. Yeah, here we go. Slide him left for Dylan Hughes. Slide him right for Manoa. Look at this. We got Manoa one more time. And Manoa gets the win, taking out Dylan Hughes in top 32. And that just goes to show you, man. You know, I'd love, I'd love to get one of the judges on the headsets. Reese, do you have a, do you have a headset there? Who, who went with Manoa? Whoever went with Manoa, please. Both them. Brian said one more time. So that was less than, okay. That was, and again, justifiable. Here's the crazy thing. Hey, Reese, really quick. Reese, really quick. There's Manoa's team celebrating. You're, elaborate, please, on the outcome. All right, well, Reese, we'll get, we'll get back to you. We'll elaborate on that. I think that, wouldn't you, wouldn't you like to hear more of an elaboration? I think so. But right now, we got cars already there. But, you know, unfortunate for Dylan Hughes. But I think this is going to be a trend of how the season is going to transpire, man. Well, and, and the crazy thing is that, you know, now Dylan, on the next round, has got to battle his way through the seating bracket oh, to get back in the great show. Oh, point. Yeah. So he does not make it into the locked and loaded nope. 24. If you're, if you're out, if you lose this battle now, 
That means you're in the seating bracket. In oh Atlanta. boy! <laughs> yeah, it's, and you, yeah, it gets yep. fun now. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's. All right, here we go. Moving on to our next battle, and that is uh, Kazuya Tagu right? Kazuya Taguchi and Alec Robbins. Kazuya Taguchi up garage, another 86, another Jerry Yang racing vehicle. Alec Robbins, oh, gets way loose, has some trouble there chasing down Kazuya Taguchi. Taguchi almost going into the wall. You saw him back off there quite a bit going into outside zone three, but Alec Robbins spinning early on. That'll mean Kazuya Taguchi has a major advantage here. Don't know what happened to Robbins, but just you saw him just really kind of fighting the car, and then eventually it came around. So that will be that'll be a, a zero. But hey, while we rack him, let's throw it down to Lorette Nickel. Lorette. Congratulations. That's an amazing move. You have come in and you are making waves. Are you so proud of what you've been able to do here? Thank you. Uh, it was it was so exciting uh, that tandem. So Dylan's lead run was super good. So I I can the good chase run. So thank you to Dylan Huji and yeah I will win the next run. Guys, I don't know what you were doing at 14, but I wasn't crushing it <laughs> in Formula Drift. And what he is doing is incredible here. Absolutely, thank you, Lorette. Yeah, I think we we can all agree, and uh, I, I love his enthusiasm. And you know, I, I heard all these murmurs of, "Hey, he's 14, coming from Japan. Make sure you know he's he's safe. All the all these things, all these steps <laughs> to get him here." So I, I think it's really cool, and you know, him picking up sponsors, picking up you know Jerry Yang, and working with him. And Jerry has uh, definitely built some amazing vehicles and programs over the years. So here we go, Alec Robbins now will lead. He's gonna need to throw down a heater of a lead run with Kazuya Taguchi in his rear view mirror. And you know, Kazuya over the last few years, like I said, Jerry Yang, he got that win in St. Louis and that was just such a tipping point for him and his program and his mentality. Here we go, Alec Robbins out front in that Nissan C. There he goes, a lot more comfortable. Gets out there, bangs that back bumper. A little hesitation going to outside zone two on the Kendra tires and outside zone three. The boy from Minnesota, oh, and Kazuya dives in on the inside. That's oh. a major mistake. That was a massive mistake by Kazuya. It just glitched. He just absolutely glitched like he was in a video game. Almost goes into the wall. Wow, and yeah, so basically default back down to the lead runs. Let's look at it again. What went wrong? Yeah, so uh, Alec Robbins a little slow out of the gate to, to begin with, but then gets on the power, goes really deep in outside zone one, does a good job through outside zone two, and then in through three here. Let's see if we can notice anything from Kazuya. It looks like he just gets on throttle and backs the car in. I mean, when it comes to, to backies, he was definitely getting there, but for what we're looking for right now, that is not the way to go. Alec Robbins, yeah, taking that Holly EFI powered Kenda Tire Z and, and doing a great job. I mean, you know, he knew. He's a, he's a driver that drives so well under pressure, but I really don't know what happened there to Kazuya. It's like the car just stepped out and, you know, uh, yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah, and, and I don't know if you saw Robbins. His line wasn't exactly the prettiest either. He kind of swung wide around it, you know, went out of that inner clip could have been tighter there but it seemed like it was an independent incident obviously just given the separation of the two vehicles so unfortunate for Kazuya Taguchi but it, it you know again defaulting back to the lead runs because both of the chase cars Alex spun in the chase Kazuya finished it out and now here Alec Robbins was out front and then Kazuya having that mistake right there on that last inside clip yeah so essentially yeah just whoever had a better lead run at that point which I mean it's it's hard to say Kazuya I don't think had as many mistakes out in the lead um, obviously, Alec had, had a few, but Alec was kind of deeper in outside zone one. So there's, there's a few back and forth spots you could point to to, to make this call. All right, here we go. Going, uh, taking a look at the replay once again. Our judges analyzing it. Vernon. So this is the, this is the lead run of Kazuya. So watch Robbins here. So again, really focusing in on Kazuya Taguchi. You can see him get to the outside zone. Alec just weevil wobble and he eventually falls down there and then into that third outside zone. Dialed on that zone. Out to the touch and go real quick and then yeah. that last inside clip. I mean, that's that's a pretty solid, you know, what we would call a qualifying run last year. That was a good independent run 
just by himself. Yeah, the only thing I noticed with Kazuya is he was kind of off throttle between two and three. It's like he had too much momentum and, and had to come off. I mean, not that that's a massive deal. If there would have yep. been an incident, it could have been, but. There we go. Outcome. Slide of left for Kazuya Taguchi or right for Alec Robbins. And Kazuya Taguchi up garage. Jerry Yang racing. 86 gets the win. Look at that one more time. Ooh. One more time from, uh, from Reese Marin. Reese, is that you? You're saying one more time? OMT for the boy. Okay. You know, we're, we're talking about no OMTs. We've already seen two of you guys are confused. <laughs> hey, right. people wanted a big swap up in, uh, in yeah. judging, and, and we've got three different judges from three very different backgrounds. Four. And, four. Yeah, four. Oh, yeah, yeah. Three, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just, I know what you meant, but yeah. yes. All right, so James the Machine Dean, Federico Sharifo in the Fiorella Ferrari, but James Dean, uh, I mean, it, it's, you know, heart goes out to the Drift Games, fellas. Uh, Pedden as well. These these Irish guys, man, they're yeah, it's tough. But super stoked. James Dean is okay. Kevin Darwish is okay. And uh, again, everything's been expedited. RTR ready to rebuild because man, that's what they do. They absolutely thrash to get the cars back out there. James Machine Dean, three-time champion in that AutoZone Mustang RTR Spec 5 FD. There he goes into that first outside zone. Transition to the second. Whoa! There we go. Bangers bumpers on the wall. In outside zone three, the machine is possessed. He's literally like T2. He's been burnt down, his exposed red eye, laser vision on the prize. Right? I mean, C2, he's burnt down, you know, like, yeah. I mean, fortunately, not half his face is gone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, just, yeah, are you not entertained? I mean, come on. James Dean back at it like a track at it. Federico Sharifa, he's back. Great to see uh, Fiorella and Fetty back. Yeah, James Dean, just an absolute rocket ship out of the gate. Now, Fede doing a good job here in the chase to cut some line to get back into the pocket. James Dean rubbing the back of that bumper. Bump, that bumper budget's going to be destroyed again this year. Federico, same thing, cutting some line to be able to get back in. It is so hard to keep up with those RTR Mustangs. They are absolute rocket ships. But Fede doing everything he can. I mean, that, that you know, Fiorella is nothing to be messed with. It is a quick car, but... I think they've got that uh, that Mustang just on full kill mode right yeah, now. Yeah, those. I mean, those the RTRs are hard to beat, you know. Unless it's it, it's, and that's what I was, you know, you always say in racing, it's not the ten thousand dollar part, it's the ten cent part. It's yeah. a, you know, it's a bolt. It's this, you know, with with Ben and the RTR team, Hops and not making it. It was throttle cable, you know. That's just such a silly little thing there. And then and uh, oh wow, look at this. We got uh, we got doors open on Fiorella. Yeah, I wonder if Fede is looking into something. Yeah, Federico Sharifo. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, while, while we're pulling them back up to the line, let's throw it down to Lorette Nickel, who's with Ryan Turk. We are so excited. Ryan Turk has a new engine package, and we were just talking about that. How happy are you? Yeah, I'm pumped. It's uh, something that will be able to make more horsepower as we need it, and it opens our ra opens our range of setup. So it's uh, better for us. Now we can explore a little further into the chassis and the car and, and the Nitto tire. And um, it's been great so far. So I've been really happy on track. Okay, And the car is feeling great on this treacherous Long Beach course. <laughs> yes, it has. It's been feeling good so far. Anything you need to dial in? Uh, yeah, just continuously try to get better and push hard on track. And, um, you know, tandem's tough and you need to be on people's doors. So just try to keep that proximity. Perfect. All right. And as you guys might remember, two years ago, Ryan Turk took the win here. Thank you, Lorette, and happy uh, belated birthday to Ryan Turk turning uh, 40. That's right. What? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's a proud dad. His husband's here. Or, or Sorry, not his husband. His wife is in the building, Ryan Turk, and, uh, and Shanty Pants is here. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Um, hey, with, with the introduction of that six-cylinder in Turk's car, no more four cylinders in Formula Drift. The only one outside of that is the the rotary of Kyle Mohan. Yeah, yeah. that's it. So no more no more four bangers. Yeah, we're we're moving up in cylinder count every yeah. year. Every year, like look at this stat: thousand horsepower, thousand like. Oh, it's crazy. You know the, the old Odi the old Odi boxy sticker like thousand horsepower. LOL. Like now it's like that's the standard. Yeah. That is the unit of measure. Yeah, we're seeing thirteen. We're we're climbing quick. Yeah, but it's it's manageable. How do you how do you manage that horsepower? Here we go. Federico Sharifo will lead. I like the uh, Italian hand gesture there as he drives by, gives it the old, uh, you know, the Italian emoji, right? <laughs> Chef's kiss. Yep. All right, here we go. Fiorella, the Ferrari out front, James Dean in the Mustang RTR Spec 5 FD. 
talk about going through war. Look at look at Fetty's car, that, that pencil of Ferrari has seen a lot of things, a lot of action. And here we go, James Dean trying to chase him down in that first outside zone. Federico Chirico, the second out and third now. Now into the inside clip, how is James going to manage? Got, got a little interesting there. Yeah. We're, I, I want to run that back because I think James was trying to go for it and Fetty kind of backed off a little bit. It, it got a little wonky. It was a little popping and locking there as opposed to just being smooth and fluid like water. So let's, what, are, what are your thoughts on that first glance? It, it looked like Fiorella had a lot of side bite dialed into the car and you can see him to start to struggle to get the car out to those zones. I mean, a lot of horsepower there. Um, you know, it's, it's a unique chassis for sure, so those adjustments aren't as easy as what you might find in, you know, an S chassis or a BMW, but, you know, Fede's car is fast, it's definitely gripped up pretty heavily, but the issue with that is he's not getting out to all the zones. James did a good job, you know, kind of put an arm's length out, you know, just, okay, you know, I'll keep you here, I'll make sure that, you know, if you do dive in really tight into one or two, we can make it, but ultimately. James Dean gets the win, so slide of left for James Dean. Federico Sharifo knocked out, but James Dean after, again, the fire, the action, everything, you know, the broken collarbone in December, getting on the podium in Irwindale. And James is advancing on to 16. James Dean will go against either the pride of Paducah, Jonathan Hurst, or Mr. Stuckey. Daniel Stuckey, excited to uh, see him and his program just uh, develop over the years. What, any big updates uh, with Stuky? What's brand he got new, under the hood? Brand new chassis. I mean, it's phenomenal. It's one of, yeah. the, one of the craziest chassis I've ever seen. Um, it's it's perfect. You could eat off the floor. It's it's crazy. Uh, uh, they've guess. got a heated windshield. Oh, that's There's weird. like micro, I don't know how it works, but there's a bunch of wires in the windshield. <laughs> micro windshield? Something, something. I don't know. Casey, Casey was talking to me for like 30 minutes. I caught about three seconds of it. He goes so quick. And, uh, you know, talking about new car, a Cadillac XLR, what? Jonathan yeah. Jonathan Hurst, the pride of Paducah, you can remember a few years ago, he slams into the wall, breaks his foot, and, uh, and, and basically, I need, I need a coilover. Like, <laughs> threw some dirt on it, was ready to get back out there, debuts this unique car, an XLR. You said the taillights are the most expensive thing on the damn Yeah, they're a couple thousand dollars for a new right. set of taillights. He found someone to 3D print them, so it's a little bit cheaper. Yeah. Save, on some, save on some budget. Is it, does he have the same engine build as, uh, as previously, that BMW? Yeah, they took it out. They took the whole wiring harness, laid it in this car, and everything fit perfect. Sick. Love it. Here we go. Jonathan Hurst out front. Cash Racing. Send it. Here we go. Keeping it cool. Mr. Cool. Woo! There are those taillights. He keeps it off the wall, but good composure there. Mr. Cool, Kenda Tires, Caddy, the Caddy Daddy goes in that last inside clip. And there we go. Wow. Snooki, I mean, what a good debut for both those guys. Their first official head to head 2024 right here as James steps out of his vehicle. He's uh, got to feel a little sigh of relief there advancing on after all, his, all he and his team have endured. Yeah, Hurst, Hurst was struggling a little bit in practice to find basically where the rear end of the car is. He's sitting so much further back than the BMW, and, and there's not a lot of run out behind the rear wheel. You can see here he's got it sorted. Now, Stuckey, further back than I think he wanted to be. I mean, it's a very fast car. It's one of the lightest cars we've got in the series right now, but just not getting the proximity. So he could be playing a very safe game in hopes that he's able to just absolutely rocket ship out, but Hurst doing a good job through outside zone one. Outside zone two definitely could have been a little bit deeper. We see some wheel corrections there. Saw an e-brake pull coming out of two, but that did get him deep into three. Touch and go looks great. Gets back on the throttle here, almost 90 degrees to that clipping point. So Hurst had a very solid lead run, not perfect. Stuckey definitely could have been deeper in though. All right, well, let's see if they can swing that thing like that Miles Parrish track, Miles Parrish. New track got swaying out right now. Big car guy. I think he's here in the building. So we got Daniel Stuckey, Jonathan Hurst. Stuckey will lead. Like you said, just a, a clinical build here. Built with a fine tune. Oh, let's see what the s back performance s chassis got for the Pride of Paducah. In that chase position, Stuckey gets out there. Flirts with the wall. Swings back into that second outside zone of the bridge. But look at that Mr. Cool applying the pressure. There he is firing off. Like an AK, here we go in that last inside clip. Mr. Cool, the cat here on the door, the M Spec oh, S chassis. Make some noise, Long Beach. Pop Daddy's back. Pop Daddy, Caddy Daddy. Yes, sir, Mr. Cool. He found a loophole in the rules. He's got his exhaust out the trunk. It exits past the exhaust. <laughs> more fire, more better. Right. <laughs>
Oh, man, what a battle. So, yeah, Stuki definitely quick. You can see it. He gaps Jonathan off the launch, back on the throttle, and then Jonathan's like, well, I'm not going to let that happen again. Starts diving in. Stuki does a really good job through both outside zones. But you can see here, Jonathan's chase is significantly more aggressive. Now, Stuki, lead run-wise, I would almost argue was better. He's able to fill all the zones, but just wasn't nearly as aggressive in the chase. So kind of have to weigh those two things out. Very, very smooth. Uh, Stuki on those Vitors, and you know Jonathan making the swap over to Kenda this year. But you can see those Kendas are keeping up. Uh, that that Cadillac looks great. Yep. I mean, it might be a might be a C6 underneath of all that. Right. But a little I mean, RC car body. And yeah. It, 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 I mean, that's what everybody is. Not everybody's doing. Excuse me. I digress. You know, Mustangs are Ford. You know, yeah. Chris has always been loyal to the Nissan. Even when he went V8, it was still a VK. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, everybody's kind of doing the Frankenstein build yeah. over the years. But that's an RC car, man. It's oh, it's great. Yeah, it's, I, it's, I think it's cool. It's a, it's a, it's a good, uh, it's a good look. Looks good on it. Mm -hmm. All right, so slide him left for Hurst or right for Daniel Stuckey. Left, Hurst gets one vote and two votes. Jonathan Hurst, Mr. Cool, Cadillac, firing off the pride of Paducah. Jonathan Hurst advances on. All right, let's throw it down to Lorette Nickel. Lorette, what's cooking? James, just a quick check-in. I don't know what it is with California, but there is like an Irish curse here. Your car was overheating in that last run. Yeah, so the car has been running perfectly since the guys rebuilt it. What a crazy week we're just after. It's running perfectly in practice as well. And then I pulled to the line for my lead run. It was overheating. I came on the radio. I was like, guys, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And uh, Ray told me, just send it. So I went for it. In the lead run, the dash was flashing at me all the time, overheating, big red light on. Just focused on my run, trying not to think about it. It was like the hottest I've ever seen any engine in my career uh, as we passed the finish line. But the fans were not working, and then they started working while I was waiting to decide are we going up calling five or not. So then the temperature started coming back down. Went back to the start line, did our chase run, and oh my god, like I, this car is playing with me right now. And we're going to cross our fingers that everything gets back together in good and working order. Jared? Thank you so much. Here we go. Frederick Osbo and Dan Burkett. Freddie. Multiple champion that rocks our energy Toyota Supra, but look at Dan Burkett, Mark Four versus Mark Five Supra. Burkett loses it. Rad Dan spins out, trying to be the aggressor, and unfortunately, rotates, spins in that third outside zone, going into that into that touch and go. Oh, unfortunate. That was sick. Again, Mark Four versus Mark Five. So again, James Dean overheating in more ways than one. The car is overheating. It's catching fire. All these things going on. I mean. Chill out, James. Chill yeah. out. <laughs> Let's look at it again here. What do, you, what do you think, Jacob? All right, Osbo, slight flick in that initiation. Gets really deep. He's, he's, I mean, he's at the wall on initiation. Outside zone one looks great. And then right here, Rad Dan starts to dial him in as we get into three and gets a little bit too aggressive. A bit of a touch. And that Mark IV does spin out next to the Mark V. But Osbo, I think we're starting to see Robot Osbo come back. The, the way he's filling these zones, the way he's driving right now, very calculated. If you watch the front wheels, there's not a lot of corrections. Bit of a left foot yeah. break to get it deeper, but look at you, you could you could oh yeah, you could draw a straight line with that front wheel. Yeah, he's I mean that's that's what we've seen yesteryear. You know, he piloted the Toyota Corolla that Ryan Turk is piloting or you know an iteration of that. But yeah, look at that. I mean just uh, locked and loaded and Dan just unfortunately rotates. That is gonna be a huge deficit for him. Hey, congratulations to uh, Step Papadakis and, uh, and his family bringing another, uh, another child in the world, so congratulations to him. Steph's probably at home watching, or uh, I think he's actually controlling the car. Freddie's not so. even driving. I think Steph has the technology where it's like an RC car. He's actually I driving. I, I would not I'm be joking. shocked. <laughs> no, I don't want here, here go the rumors. Yeah, here here we goes. go. I'm just, I'm just feeding, feeding the derps. <laughs> feeding the derps. All right, Dan Burkett now out front. Again, just love, love to see this. You know, Freddie got his start in the Mark IV. Dan has just always had, you know, the Mark IV Supra, so it's really cool to see this battle. Here we go. The Rad Industries Mark IV Supra. Rad Dan in that first outside zone, a bit off. Now tries to tighten up with that chrome look. And Freddie with the new white livery looking dialed. Here we go in that final inside clip. He doesn't need to do much to get this victory, unfortunately, with Dan's major mistake. So that's going to be all she wrote, unfortunately, for Rad Dan. But great to have Dan Burkett back in formative competition. 
So, uh, you know, it's kind of inspiration, you know, talking to Evan Bogovich, you know, Travis Reeder, some of these drivers maybe taking a hiatus, but it's not goodbye. It's see you later, see you back here in the mix, just like Rad Dan. So let's take a look at it again over here. Justin Smash killing it on the drone pilot action here. Yeah, I, I mean, Dan, I don't know if maybe he was down on a bit of power, just <clears throat> not able to fill the zones the way that he even was in the chase. So not entirely sure what was going on with that car. Uh, watching him through practice, he was doing a phenomenal job. Could just be in his head. When you have a spin out like that, it's very difficult to have the confidence again to get into the lead and, and really push things. So, All right, here we go. Slide him left for Osbo or right for Dan Burkett. And it looks like Frederick Osbo is getting the win. Frederick Osbo gets the win. Hey, old school FD driver Kenji Yamanaka in the building. Yes, sir. Hey. Kenji joining us here. Stoked to see him. Got all the celebrities rolling in. I love yeah, it. Yeah, dude. Sick. Absolutely. Colette Davis is in the building. Colette, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Got a little wave there. Supporting her, supporting her dude, Adam LZ. Just randomly seeing people come and go. So uh, almost halfway through. There's 32. There we are. The, the Rain X Toyota GR Corolla. It's on Nitto tires. And uh, again, new power plant, new horsepower. So not as wound up. You know, it's still wound up. But just that four cylinder, you're trying to throw the nitrous, the turbo, all that at it. So, uh, they said, let's make the switch. Here we are, the Rockstar Energy Drink Top 32. And it's Castro and Beecham. Beecham went to the rubber earlier today in practice, saw that. And Castro looks like he's possessed. He's ready to uh, get after it. So Castro will lead, coming up from Dominican Republic. And that Toyota 86. And here we go with uh, Beecham. Beecham in the chase position. All right, Castro out front. Let's see what he's got for Beecham. Leads him into that first outside zone. Not getting all the way out there. Beecham does, but he's bathing in that smoke. That could throw him off. Oh, it's Castro. The LTH 86 spins out. That means that's a major advantage for Beecham to spinning out in the lead run. Technically, Beecham does not need to complete the entirety of the run because if the lead car spins, obviously, you know, it, you're going to impede in the in the performance of that chase vehicle. Yeah, it it, it seemed like Castro was a bit shallow um, through one, and then I think he just tried to get, really get on the throttle, get it deeper, and that's what caused the spin. So shallow there, big flick, and then you can start to see the car already over rotate. So throws a ton of power coming out of one. I think realizes how much speed and grip he's got at that point, and then tries to save the car. You can see it slingshot there. And that's it, just not able to get the car caught up at that point. It's tough because sometimes, you know, even just letting off the throttle, you would think the car could catch. Depends on the setup, depends on the chassis. There's a lot of different variables. Um, and all these cars are so dynamic now yeah. that what you think would happen in a grassroots car or even a daily driver is not happening in these vehicles. No, they're, they're, they're like you said, the, the dynamicism is, uh, is, is really impressive and what they can do. and. How they can even save something, you know? You see the drivers, how they just pedal back. You're like, how did they make that happen? Just yeah. that awareness, left foot braking, just getting that car to do what they uh, what they request. And that's, I think that was the, the blessing of James Dean. Um, you know, him crashing really hard in Irwindale, let's build this car. He's built to his kind of liking, you know, versus just yeah. being handed the keys. Um, so it's, it was really unfortunate what happened and what transpired, obviously, on Tuesday. But, you know, you could see just the tenacity is there. Yeah, he's a he's a driver that when he feels like an underdog, he drives so much better. And right. you know, having to rebuild a car, two, two different cars, back to back events, right. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna get in your head a bit. Here we go, Trent Beecham now out front, the Clonex BMW. He's got an LS under the hood, next in tires. Go turn O oh, and Castro shuts it down again. So Beecham does need to complete this run. But again, that that that's not like you said, it's not truly an incomplete. He did have that mistake. He could salvage something here, but that's obviously a, a mistake by comparison. And Castro, I think he's got some gremlins. Yeah, yeah. definitely needs to exercise the demons out of that vehicle, unfortunately for him. Yeah, Beecham did have a, a pretty big mistake, but I do think when Castro went offline and straightened, I, I think Beecham saw that and was, was kind of concerned he was going to impede. But uh, I believe we're going we're gonna to get a, a ruling yeah. on this pretty quick. Yeah, there it is, just, just like that. So. Trenton Beecham gets the win. Castro knocked out, but Beecham gets the victory and advances on to the top 16. Guess what? Beecham, you're going against Osbo in the 16.
All right, let's take a look. We are halfway through our Rockstar Energy Drink Top 32. And you can see uh, already in, you got Odie Bakshis versus Sorensen, Manoa versus Taguchi. Yeah, so all Jerry Yang Racing. James Dean versus a brand new caddy daddy, Jonathan Hurst. Frederick Osbo with that Rockstar Energy Drink Toyota Super going against Trenton Beecham. Halfway through our Top 32. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, the AutoZone Streets of Long Beach presented by Type S. I'm Jared Deanna, Jacob Gens. We're talking some smack at Lorette Nickel. She's a girl on the ground, getting all the heat on the street. Don't go anywhere. In drifting, everything's a mental game. Boom! Perfect. You're not focused. You're off your game. Ryan Turk is back at it. He wants it. Performance Racing, battle-tested in Formula Drift for the last four years. XPR contains Centerlook Additive Technology, Ultimate Z DDP Wear Protection, and Superior High Temp Performance. Poor Purple, Royal Purple, the Synthetic Expert. Drifting is not just a sport, it's culture, it's in our blood. It's a fine line that you have to walk. You have to be able to adapt on the fly and be able to drive on your instinct. Tires are what we live and breathe in Formula D. We couldn't do this without them. Formula Drift is brought to you by Toyota, let's go places. Royal Purple, the official engine oil of Formula Drift, the synthetic expert. Rockstar Energy, the official energy drink of Formula Drift. Four, three, two, one. That's right, AutoZone, the streets of Long Beach presented by Type S. Be sure to follow Type S, tag them. You could win a, uh, a jump pack courtesy of uh, Type S. I'm doing a little Instagram takeover, so uh, obviously love, uh, love for you guys to win. So come on down to the booth. And uh, also GoPro, we got some goods. Got so many cool things going on. If you haven't, check out Sim Magic. Head over to the Sim Magic activation tent. Get ready to experience the ultimate drift simulators. Our simulators offer a hyper-realistic drifting experience that'll leave you feeling like a pro. Obviously, Sim's playing a major role in a lot of these drivers' prowess. So uh, here we are taking a look. This is a uh, ticket. You can see the, uh, the, the, the yellow names are advancing on. So second half of the bracket. Ooh, Matt Field. Diego Higa. A lot of eyeballs on, uh, on Matt Field. You know, coming, coming close to a, to a championship. Last few years, but Diego Higa uh, seems like a little, little more stable as far as you yeah. know, him, him and comfortability. Getting familiar with that car, the JDM Supreme new Street Hunters kit. Shout out to TJ Hunt. I know uh, 
He was stoked that he's running that kit, but Diego seems a little more simpatico with his vehicle. Yeah, I don't know if it's just more time or, or what it is, but um, all through practice, he was, he was just filling all the zones and, and very confident. I chatted with him a little bit this morning, and he's, he seems relaxed and uh, fun, uh, fun on Matt's side of things. They swapped an engine last night. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, didn't it, it seemed more precautionary than anything, uh, but... You know, either way, I mean, new engine in, that's a lot of things to make sure it's all good, but look good in practice, so this, this, I'm very much looking forward to this battle. Yep, here we go, Diego Higa, Matt Field. Matt Field will lead the triple seven. Beast from the Bay, got some new, uh, got some new gear, some new merch, go check it out. Here we go, Diego Higa, right of Brazil, chasing him down. Matt Field, four leg exhaust, Corvette, feeling the heat wave, lean customs, transition under that second outside zone, Diego Higa, into that third outside zone. See, like, like I'm saying, Diego looks a lot more refined and composure. You can see being aggressive, confident with it. But Matt Field out front. Matt Field just, that's that's the beast of the Bay we know. You know, he, he won here last year. He had something to prove. And, and I feel that's, that's the theme once again. Yeah, so, you know, Matt, solid initiation there. Diego right on him. And it looks like he taps him on that initiation. And then Matt wasn't able to get out all the way to one because of that tap. Now, outside zone two looks good. Outside zone three is good. He got not quite as deep through those sections. Nice parallel transition as we come around through that inside clip. But there was some contact made right on that initiation point. Uh, he got very, very aggressive. Now, it would have pushed Matt slightly offline. Um, I mean, it is a decel zone. He is totally allowed to be deceling at that point in time. But he got just very, very aggressive and uh, causing, yeah, causing a bit of an incident there. But you know what's cool, though? It's just Matt throttling through it. Yeah. Like, yep, you hit me, let's go. Well, like, Diego knew who he's going against. Yeah. So you, you really have to give it the beans, right? Oh, you, for you sure. You really got to get it all out there. So, you know, go, going against Field, he's, he's not going to let him just take it from him. He's going he's gonna to have to earn it. Or, yeah. or Diego's going to upset, uh, you know, a, a real championship contender over the last few years. Yeah, we've been seeing more and more of it, too. I mean, even last year, seeing some of the top guys go out really early. Like, this new wave of drivers coming in, is it's not, you know, we always talk, oh, you know, nothing's ever guaranteed. Like, it's it's getting it's getting hard for these yeah. guys that have been in the sport, you know, 10-plus years. Absolutely. You know, I always just related to, to skateboarding and action sports, just that progression of, uh, of tricks and, right. you know, execution, cleanliness, or even just aggressiveness. You know, you see, like, I always like watching Jamie Foy skate. He's, he's the stockier, you know, you know, compact, like muscle. Yeah. And, and when he stomps a trick, it looks different than something a little more finesseful. So, yeah, so that's that's what it's like, just seeing a 14-year-old Manoa come in and, and, and really kind of push for it. Uh, you know, and again, Shanahan, so happy to have him here in the building. Just another testament to why Formula Drift is the premier international drifting sanctioning body. So, so. we getting a, I think we might be getting a, a time out here. Time out? Time out. Uh, I, love so. that, I love that podcast, it's called Outer Zone. Outer Zone, I know. <laughs> this worked, worked, worked so well. What? No, it's exclusively cow content. It's utter zone. Utter zone. I like it's that. the utter zone. I like that. All right, so we are getting a competition timeout. What is this? Okay, contact without incomplete, so they both get an opportunity. So, not utilizing comp timeout. Yeah. Right. So they don't they don't have to because just for those that are new or, or aren't familiar with, but uh, every driver is allotted one competition timeout. That's a five minute allotment, one through the entirety of the weekend. So uh, let that let that be known. So um, again, contact with no with no incomplete. So uh, we'll let them uh, get re-racked and we'll move on to our next pair. We'll have them uh, look at their vehicles. All right, well, we got to take a minute in the action here. Mustang is celebrating 60 years next week, but they're in the building out here, shredding around, tearing around. So uh, let's take a moment and uh, talk about Ford Mustang. What is going on, friends? I am here at the Mustang Unleashed Experience just over the bridge. Make sure you guys stop by, enter for your chance to go for a ride in a brand new Ford Mustang and experience the drift break that myself and Chelsea Denofa developed. Check out all the Mustangs, grab some swag, and make sure just have a good time. Put a smile on your face. We'll see you over here. Whoa! Whoa! There you go. So there is the Mustang skid pad over there. They got the Dark Horse, got Mustang GTs, you know, I mean, EcoBoost. They, they got it all over there. And uh, I'm gonna have the pleasure of going out there and talking with some cats. 
in, uh, in Charlotte next week, celebrating again 60 years of the iconic brand that is and vehicle that is the Ford Mustang. Look, Kevin Wells talking about Terminator. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Very stoic. Stop. Stoic with his clock. Yeah, Dr. Pepper and cigarettes. That's what Kevin does. <laughs> <laughs> Forrest <laughs> Wang and Ken Gushi. Uh, Wang making a, make, making a tire switch this year. And, and Ken Gushi going back to Gretty. Just debuted that Lakai shoe. Stoked for him. Uh, his setup, he's, uh, he's back with a 2J. Yeah. So Great. he's like, reunited and it feels so Gushi. And uh, he's, he's excited. So here we go. Forrest Wang, Ken Gushi. Let's get nuts. Yellow Speed Racing, S15, always got good style. See if he can deliver here. Forrest Wang, under, into that second outside zone. Look at Ken Gushi. Just look at that, ready to attack. Lacking that kind of mimicking of the angle. Ken does have that proximity. This looks like kind of Daigo Saito era where he's diving in, but he needs to get to the side. Tell you what, Forrest Wang really throwing down some speed. It looks like uh, the combination of his new tire program and his car coming together, it looks like it's working out for him. Yeah, I spoke with him a little bit earlier about it, and, and he said the, the hardest part is learning how, how this tire performs in contrast to everything else he's used before. So um, it, it feels like he's still you know working to trust exactly what's going to happen, but initiation looks really good from Wang there. Does not quite get all the way to outside zone one. Bit of a hesitation. There's a bit more angle through two. Back on the throttle, kind of late into three. Ken, pretty shallow in the chase there. I mean, not where he should be. If Ken can pull it a really, really strong lead run, kind of touch all the walls, he's in a really good spot. But if not, some of this um, lack of proximity is going to be an issue. And you can see that diving that Jared was talking about before. Not what we're looking for. We want them basically front wheel behind the other front wheel. It's yep. kind of that perfect, you know, uh, perfect chasing line. Talking so. to that pocket. pocket. Yeah, the pocket. pocket. Yeah. yeah. And not impeding, going in front of the front wheels. So uh, you just know, you know, you just know when it's a good chase run. So. Don't, uh, again, don't impede that. Yeah, if your uh, heart rate goes up, it's a good chase. <laughs> exactly right. Hey, uh, Type S, if you uh, if you need some products, uh, Type S is being sold a Formula Jeff merchandise trailer, so go on by. They got underglow kits, jump starter with a built-in USB-C cable and LCD display. Got a Pro Series slim LED trim lights. Even a Larry Chen's got a signature light, 360 LED video light and power bank. So uh, if you need some power, you need some juice, you need some light, head on over to Type S Formula Drift, buy some gear. All right, here we go. Looks like a second run of this Ken Gushi Forest Wing battle. The Gretty bodies. Toyota 86 into that first outside zone. Wow, look at that. That was sick. That movement right there going to that second outside zone into the third. Now here comes Forrest Wang. Again, keeping good proximity there. Ken looked a lot more comfortable out front. Didn't want to get into the side of him on that chase run, but uh, Gushi. I love that move from outside zone one to two. He just like just magically just slid right into that second outside zone. That looks really good. Yeah, I, I really like how Ken handles the car and he looks so much more comfortable than years past. So outside zone one looked much better than what he did on Forest. Bit of a hesitation in two, but the way he able, is able to push the car out. And then three is where things start to fall apart a bit for Ken. Um, Forrest in the chase, kind of a similar chase to what we saw what Ken was doing, where a little hesitant, a little bit further back than what we would have liked. But you can see here, Forrest dives in, and then Ken, that, I wouldn't say a reinitiation by any means, but a little more hesitation through two. But because of that, he's not able to get all the way up to three. So, you know, combining both of their runs, it's very, very close. Um, I would have liked to have seen just more proximity from both. Yep. Couldn't agree more with you, Jacob. So awaiting the outcome here, let's see which way it is going. Is it going the way of Wang or Gushi? Here we are, slide him left for Forrest Wang or right for Ken Gushi. We got it one more time. A Ken Gushi and Ken Gushi gets the win. Kenshiro Gushi gets the win in that Gretty Mottis 86. Yeah. yeah, twisting the screws on these judges, but push comes to shove, they're gonna judge. Real judgy, these guys. Real judgy. Always just judging, judging, watching. Look at the baby, look at the baby. Catch an, early, smile, flight home. Catch an early flight home from San Diego. Vernon, old VZ, Zvanevelt. Yeah. Hey. Hey, give me thumbs up. All right. <laughs> Brian Eggert. Did I say that right? And then Reese Marlin. I'm joking, Reese Marin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And uh, Robin Ishida, again, he is here in the building, but again, with our four judges, uh, they rotate uh, each round, so we get uh, 
three different judges at two of the rounds, or you know, six. Yeah. You do the math. He's a supervisor this weekend. Yes. Yes. He's judging the judges. <laughs> Just gonna say. He is, that. <laughs> like, he is the. He is the ulti- He's like the Bowser of the judging world. Mm. He's the final boss. The judgy judge. He's the judgy judge. All right, here we go. So back to the second half of the Diego Higa Matt Field. Remember they had that contact. Diego Higa a little aggressive, but uh, again, no competition timeouts were utilized. So here we go. Diego Higa out front from Brazil. JDM Supreme, 86. Matt Field, that Borla, Corvette, the beast of the bay transitioning in that second outside zone. Are they handle third? I'm telling you, Diego Higa, this is just, it seems like a different car, a different Higa behind the wheel. And Matt Field brings it on home. Wow. I'm telling you, Diego, it seems like everything is really coagulated, coming together for this Brazilian driver. A lot of hype over the years, just hasn't totally kind of manifested all that, but could have, could have shifted right now. But let's let's take a look at it again. Smash dropping in. Love that dive. And there we go. You can see as Higa initiates, gets out to outside zone one, does a phenomenal job there. Oh, I think we, <laughs> I think, speaking of incidents, I Throw think our down. drone operator is going to need a five minute timeout. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I, I really love the way that Higo was able to fill all those outside zones. Did a phenomenal job there. Uh, I think we're going to swap back to our previous run. You can see where that incident was. So right here, yeah. Yeah, not, not too bad. Just a little boop, if you will. But uh, yeah, I mean, going back in memory, who had a better lead run is tough to say. I will say on, on Matt's chase run, uh, coming at a three into our touch and go, Matt kind of had to just drive through it. So this is this is the you know the non-crash drone version of it. So good initiation there for Ega. Lots of angle on power, nice and early. Great job through one, a little bit shallow maybe, and then through two, Matt starts to reel him in, and then you can see here Higa gets back on the power, and Matt having to be a little bit hesitant. He was almost too far in, and kind of misses out or the the touch and go there after three. Inside clip looked good. So that was the only big mistake there. So. Really, we're going to weigh the mistake from Higa on initiation versus the mistake from Matt in our touch and go. All right, so waiting for the outcome. Remember, next weekend, streets of Long Beach taken over by IndyCar Sports Car. And drifting will be going down Friday and Saturday night. I won't be there, unfortunately. i got to go to Texas. So uh, Ryan and uh, some, other, some other members of our team are going to be out here. But we've got a fun uh, the Mystery Super, Dr Super Drift Challenge. So here we go. Matt Field, Diego Higa, slide him left for Field one more time. One more time, they're going at it again. And that was unanimous. So, you know, I, I agree with this call. Good aggressive driving. Higa got him, you know, made that contact. That was a mistake. So, uh, you know, hey, uh, one of y'all throw on a headset there. Judges, Reese, maybe throw it on. Reese, Marin, go and throw on that headset. Let's, uh, let's wrap out. We got a quick beat here. So uh, our first one more time of the season, I, I agree with it. What, what, it was unanimous from you guys. Yeah, I think um, we all pretty much saw the errors on, on both parts. Um, Higa coming in was a little bit aggressive on the entry, um, which gave him a ding. And then when we switch everything around, we have Matt Fields going into uh, the touch and go into the inner clip where there was a slight little bobble, maybe a little bit of a straightening. So I think it was just kind of conclusive that all of us were like, this would be better off as a one more time and have him go again. Perfect. And duke it out. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. All right. So good clarification there from uh, Reese. On behalf of Vernon, Brian Egger. Here we go. Three-time champ, Chris the Force Forsberg versus Adam LZ. This is, uh, is going to break the internet. This should be a really fun one. You know, Forsberg and his uh, all-new Z looking good. New livery in that Nismo. NOS energy drink, all-new Z. And, of course, Adam LZ getting on the box yesterday in his Drift HQ BMW. Here we go. Chris Forsberg will lead Adam LZ giving chase. Let's see what we got from these two legends coming into that first outside zone. Adam LZ drops back, he rotates, and that's going to be a major deficit as Forsberg continues on. And it's all new team, Forsberg dialed right now. He's got the VR setup, the GTR. They got the 2J under the hood of the BMW. But uh, that mistake right out of the gate, that is definitely going to hurt. LZ, Adam LZ. Yeah, it almost looked like a miss shift. Like he, like he had the power, I want to see here. So he's got the power, and then as he comes to it, the car just over rotates, but he doesn't get on when he should have. So I don't know if the car popped out of gear or something, because he does get it back in. Uh, but looking at Chris's lead run after obviously the mistake happens, the first initiation looked good, but yeah, just kind of disappeared. So Chris, not super deep through outside zone one, much better through outside zone two. Pushing the car nice and wide. 
about two feet off the wall through three. Touch and go looks pretty good and then able to get around. So there is room for uh, Adam to be able to come in here and do something better, but it would essentially mean that Chris has got a zero out at some point. Yeah, yeah, major major mistake there. Regardless, it was an independent incident from uh, from LZ. Unfortunately, just he was he was on a tear yesterday, but right now uh, he's got a, he's got a bit of an uphill battle here. But Chris Forsberg, love to advance on and keep on keeping on. So LZ it will must, lead. Forsberg will give chase. What's up? Must not be anything major. I mean, Adam's pulling back up, so yeah. I don't think it. I mean, he did finish the course, kind of, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm really curious as to what ended up happening there. I'll have to, have to check in on the vlog later and find out. Right. Yeah. It is nice how open he is with, with some of these mistakes that happen. And, and we're seeing it more and more with the other drivers, too, with their content, where they're like, hey, this is yep. the real life of drifting. Yep, and, the, and their victories, man. I mean, him getting that, him getting that win last year, that was, that was massive. Oh, it was great. That was huge. Yeah. That was really cool, good for him. And, you know, he's, he's doing uh, Drift Masters and he's doing FD. So he's kind of Bouncing around, bouncing around the world, LZ World Tour. Here we go, Drift HQ, BMW, Adam LZ. Oh, wow, he really threw it in. He hates that truck, man. Yeah. I don't know what that truck did to him, but he beat that thing up yesterday and today, and Forsberg unfazed, absolutely unfazed, even going hard into that wall. I mean, Adam, I don't know what that truck did to you, but man, he's really taking it out on that thing. We talk about people driving angry. If you want an example of what it looks like to drive really, really pissed yeah. off, this is it. And you can you can feel the frustration out of Adam through the car, and he definitely took it out on the back end of that car. It's a big initiation. I look at like 90 degrees, gets back on the throttle, sees it, flicks the rear end out to get it to the wall, smashes the bumper once, smashes the bumper twice. Unfortunately, it doesn't give him a great line through three, but then into the touch and go, looks pretty good. And then right here, eyes up the wall and says, eh, one more. Yep. Yeah, no need no need for the rear end. He's got time to fix it, so we're good. Yep. All right, well, I think it's going to be a quick verdict here for Forsberg, unfortunately, uh, or unfortunately for LZ. Fortunately for Chris Forsberg, that mistake. And there it is. Chris Forsberg gets the win. Forsberg, the new livery, Nismo, NOS Energy Drink vehicle and uh, while Forsberg gets the win let's throw it down to the gentleman's making a lot of noise the Irish boy that is Connor Shanahan is with Rhett Nickel and a great warm reception from the fans we're so excited you're here and you're going against Ryan Turk in your first top 32 here on Saturday what are your expectations yeah first of all I'm honored to be here it's been uh, an unbelievable experience so far so I can't thank all the FD staff who made me feel so welcome and the whole championship as a package. I've dreamt as a little kid driving on the streets of Long Beach, so I'm already winning. I'm, uh, I'm already winning as a, as a guy who, who dreamt of this for a long time, but I don't like losing, that's for sure. So it's game on. Um, you know, it wasn't a great practice session for me this morning, but I think we can take some of the experience we learned off yesterday and Turk's going to give it to me. I know that for sure. It's going to be fireworks from the off, so make sure you got the phone out because it could end in, uh, it could end in drama or it could end in our way, but I'm excited. I'm ready to go, and I'm looking forward to it. Were you experiencing some car problems earlier today? Uh, we just had a small problem. It was nothing major. It just took us a little bit long to find out. Um, when we got it started, the car is good now. I've got uh, good guys with me. My brother's up in the tower cheering me on and uh, spotting in my ear, so I've drove with that guy my whole life since I've been racing as a kid, so to have him in my ear, the information that that man can give me and set up and stuff is phenomenal. So we have the whole package. I'm, uh, I'm ready. I don't know how hard I can push it, but we're about to find out. Connor, again, welcome to Formula Drift. Jared? Yeah, you know, had some words with him on Tuesday. And, he's, and you know, we, I think we met in passing before, but I was like, you know, hey, welcome. He's like, dude, super stoked. Just really humble. He ended up winning the Sim Magic uh, simulator <laughs> competition. Um, of course so he did. A, yeah, just a, just a testimonial too. Um, he loves his stuff. He's grown up, like you said, uh, growing up, growing up, a kid wanting to drift. I, I love that. It makes one makes me feel old. My back hurts all of a sudden. And uh, and and two, it's cool to have your dreams become a reality. So yeah. it's welcome, Connor Shanahan. Moving along down uh, down the pipe here, talking about uh, that vehicle, Connor Shanahan, uh, getting the keys from RCP, Rome Sharpentier, Taylor Hole. That's uh, another little Dale Earnhardt livery here. The Wrangler Wrangler comp cams graphics here. You gotta love it. Garage stick BMW. Getting a new chassis here for RCP. And he's making it look easy right out of the gate. Well done by both the guys. Taylor Hole, amazing chase job. All right. Oh, Taylor Hole gets a ground. Oh. oh, and Rome parks it around that last inside clip. And that looks independent. 
And we are seeing uh, Rome and his team. Looks like they are they're up here in the pits, and they are thrashing to go get down there. Hmm. Yeah, that uh, that could have been a lot worse, but it seemed like Rome just again these these damn gremlins, man. They just pop up and shut you down. Yeah, it's hard to say. I'm, I really want to see the replay to understand. But let's take take a look at the run as a whole sure. first. First outside zone from Rome looks good, about six inches off the wall. Drags the bumper through the second one. You can see bits of that BMW flying in the air. Phenomenal job through three. And then right here, carrying a lot of speed. No, he did get tapped by Taylor. Oh, so we didn't see that. it with the other angle, but you can see it there. So watch as they transition out. Rome still on throttle, gets into the D cell. Taylor surges real hard and then locks it up. Oh, there that you go. right there, that little tap is what caused the back end of Rome to go around. Oh. And yeah, then, he him. Okay, I wasn't sure what the, the, the little piece flying off there. I hope it wasn't the belt, but it, it seems like it was the base. But Rome doing a, a phenomenal job. And I mean, Taylor's chase was really good. Just too aggressive as they transition through there. It's so tough. Because you've got all that, you know, potential energy built up in the suspension, the car's slingshot. Yep. And, you know, you've got to try and slow the car down as, as quick as possible. So I think they're they're determining right now exactly who's at fault. My guess is it's going to be Taylor. Um, not, you know, that's not gospel not yet, but yep. yeah. All right, so Taylor getting aggressive, goes into the side of RCP. Let's see who is at fault. So Taylor Hull is deemed at fault. That would mean that if Taylor wants to get hands on his car, he would have to utilize his competition timeout. Rome is allotted up to 10 minutes to get hands on his vehicle, inspect. If there is any damage, straighten things out, make sure it's all good. Don't go anywhere. Guess what? Jacob, myself, Jared Deanda, we'll be back here. AutoZone Streets of Long Beach presented by Type S. I'm Ryan Turk, and I'm super proud to announce Rain-X's all-new wiper blade design, the Turkin SUV Heavy Duty Series. Whoa, whoa, cut! Ryan, what? it's the truck and SUV blade. It says it right there. These new blades are specifically designed for truck and SUV windshields. They're tougher and built for rugged weather. Like I said, the all-new Rain-X truck and SUV blade, engineered not to be turked in tough conditions and built for your truck or SUV. Get a pair today, only at AutoZone. I mean, I still like the idea of a Turk and SUV blade. Turn your passion into a career at the University of Northwestern Ohio. From high performance to automotive, diesel, and everything in between, you'll find a degree that will get you a job. Students that go through our programs have fantastic experiences and they come out getting good job placements. 70% hands-on, no out-of-state tuition, and accredited degrees in trades that are in high demand all across the country. 10 out of 10. If you even think this is the right place for you, you better just go. Learn more about your future at unoh.edu. This season, Toyota Racing is looking for jaw droppers. Break for Martin Shurex right there, the fastest lap of the day. Iron stomachs that can stand the pressure. And quick draw thumbs that leave their own smoke trail. So hold on tight and strap yourself in. This season, we want you. Join us at Toyota Racing. T Radio, experience ultra high performance. We've been holding power you make for 30 years, but here's the real question. How much torque are you making? Because every single ACT clutch is rated by the torque produced at the crank. That's all your clutch cares about, your power, your performance, your success. Unrivaled precision, power, and durability. Visit advancedclutch.com today. 30 years of precision engineering and performance excellence because every revolution starts at the crank. Formula Drift is brought to you by BC Racing, the official suspension of Formula Drift. Go for gold. Torque Drift 2, the official drifting game of Formula Drift. NGK Spark Plugs, the ignition specialist. 
Hello everyone and welcome back to Long Beach. As we just saw on the track, Taylor Hole hit Rome Charpentier and Rome, are you worried about the damage? Uh, yeah, we don't know if we have all the spares to be able to replace the front and the rear in 10 minutes. Uh, we had a similar impact in media day and it took about 45 minutes to get it fixed and straightened back out. So as long as the subframes aren't bent, I think we're gonna make it back out there. But right now the wheel is about 90 degrees to the right and they said the rear is uh, caved all the way in also. So the guy's got to fix two corners in 10 minutes and hopefully we can make it happen. Rome, best of luck. Jared? Yeah, that's, that's a tough one right there. And it, I mean, that's the transparency that we love and, and thank you, Lorette, for asking the hard questions. But uh, that's, you know, so that's, that's how the cookie crumbles. That's how the suspension breaks. So that's how the team thrashes. Here we go. So we're going back to the one more time of Matt Field, Abisman Bay, Diego Higa, and uh, it was unanimous one more time. And again, we're really trying to force the judges to not at, 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 to not default to one more time. All right, here we go. Matt Field, the four legs off, heat wave, lean custom, GT radio, Corvette, boom! Right there, backs it in. That carbon Kevlar back on Look at Diego Higa, a little left foot break, maximum angle there for Matt Field. Really max out the ego. Look at Diego just catapulting forward. Slingshots to the side of the Corvette. Matt, I think he leveled up there. That lead run just looked look, look a little more confident. Again, just a little more aggressive, bigger angle. And you saw him just back in that carbon Kevlar bumper. Watch that first initiation. Yeah, really good here. Lines it up perfectly. It's this section right here. Look, it gets on throttle to oh. make sure he goes out. Bit of a correction. Slingshots back around through outside zone two. But Higa is really learning how to utilize the tire and the suspension correctly. Cuts the line perfectly. If you're going to do it, that's how you do it. And then through here, holds the car back. Ah, uh, man, Higa, it's like his driving age by five yeah. years overnight. It's its so great to see. But yeah, Matt Field just using the momentum, big left foot brake to get the car back around. I mean, Matt was being very aggressive. There were some technical mistakes in there. That left foot brake was pretty heavy. Um, some of that, that last minute swing out through outside zone one was, was pretty noticeable. But at the end of the day, he did fill the zones. Yep. So if he is able to do the same, then those might come into play. But at the end of the day, Matt did what he needed to do to, to fill, check all the boxes. Yep. And also, um, when we look at that again, Diego in that chase position in outside zone three, you saw him kind of almost exceed the front wheels of Matt Field. So could have, could have been deeper and get more back in what we describe as the pocket. Yep. So here we are. These guys are thrashing garageistic BMW. Rome was uh, talking to Lorette and says, all right, what took us 45 minutes on Tuesday, they only got 10 to do it in right now. So here we go. Higa will be out front. Diego Higa, JDM Supreme, 86. Matt Field, Beast from the Bay. We'll be chasing him down. Diego Higa, really finding that secret sauce. Comes into that first outside zone. He digs deep. Let's see what Matt Field can do. He, he can't give Diego an inch. Very similar line, very comparable. Now transition this last outside zone. How's Matt Field gonna handle? And Diego Higa. Man. Things, things get interesting. That didn't get any easier on the judges. No, it did not. That really did not. We are splitting hairs here. Just the, the driving prowess, and here we are. We're only in top 32. Right, thanks for the reminder. Yeah, right? <laughs> Yeah, and, it's and, and also uh, this this you brought it up earlier, but it, again with our new format, our seating battle brackets, you know we we're going to lock in 24 into Atlanta, and that is dictated on how you end up coming out of Long Beach. So the yep. previous round dictates if you're locked in for the 24 for the, ne for the next round. Yeah, so these battles are super important. Higa, good initiation. Matt having to add some angle on so he doesn't repeat what Higa did, but out front, first outer zone looks great by Diego. You can see Matt basically reacting to every move that Diego's making. He twitches a little bit, Matt twitches a little bit. And right here, dives into that, that inside pocket through the last inside clip. Um, yeah, really expert driving from Matt. Phenomenal lead, drum, uh, lead run from Diego Higa. There's not a lot of things I can point at here to, to separate the two. So I know the judges are, we've got arms crossed across the board, which yep. means they're very, you know, they're concentrating, they're ripping through these, but. Here we go, here we go. Slide left for Field or right for Diego Higa. Matt Field gets the win. Matt Field gets the win. It's unanimous. And uh, Vernon, let's throw you on the headset there, man. Again, welcome to, uh, welcome to Formula Drift. And uh, Vernon, we're going to you. It was unanimous after a one more time battle. Yeah, it was. It was, uh, it was a nice battle, fairly close, but some small corrections here and there from both drivers. But overall, I think uh, Matt did uh, the better job. 
And, uh, what, you know, after that one more time, I mean, Diego look, looks really confident there. They had very similar lines right there in the outside zone three. But what was the big deciding factor for Matt Field over Diego? Um, I think overall he did better. He was better in the zone in his lead. Uh, and Chase was also better in proximity, less corrections. Uh, I think it was a bit more difficult for him to chase um, Higa at that moment because he was not that deep in the zone to make some small twitches, feathering with the throttle. But overall, uh, a great job. Right on. Thank you. Thanks for the inside there. Thank you. Vernon, our new judge. Again, join us from the Netherlands. Uh, judges in a variety of different sanctioned bodies, so a great addition to our judging panel. You can see the clock ticking down there. I believe that was Rome Charpentier, the 10 minute clock. So just over uh, six minutes still available there as uh, we are getting ready for our next battle. And uh, who do we have here? It looks like Rudy Hansen. Talk about Rudy Hansen and he is going against Simon Olsen. Here we go, Simon Olsen out front. Simon Olsen feels suspension. S chassis really came together last year for him. Now let's see how he transitions. Rudy Hansen, a shallow line. Look at that third outside zone. I mean, this is this has now become Simon Olsen's textbook, given the marriage of him and this car. It, it's a, it's a match made in heaven. I mean, this is just it's so great to see Simon. You know, he, he kind of struggled with that Supra, and, and then finally he says, you know what? Let, let's try this. And supercharged LS S chassis. Who knew that that was a match made in heaven? Yeah, Simon Olsen has picked up right where he left off last year. He's, he's a contender in the championship already, and you can see the confidence he's driving with. Almost no corrections there. We get one small wheel twitch, that's it. One small wheel twitch again. He is. He knows exactly where this car needs to be on track. He could have been maybe six inches deeper into, into uh, outside zone three. That's about it. Rudy Hansen, welcome to the big leagues. Welcome to battling one of the top drivers right now. It's tough. Rudy's having to cut the line. He's trying to keep up. You know, we're talking about one of the most well set up cars ever built in drifting. And Rudy's got a car that is, has seen has seen the battle. He's seen walls. Yeah. No, he's seen, no, I, 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 I joke, but yeah, he uh, he hit pretty hard uh, earlier this week. So, you know, getting that car straightened out and proper, that's that's an uphill battle. Yeah, it's tough. And, and you know, you lose some confidence in, in the chassis itself. You know, it's hit that hard. Things aren't, aren't as straight as they used to be. Things aren't pointing in the right direction. And Rudy and his team did an incredible job to get everything back together. But you can take a look at that chassis. It is hopes, dreams, and duct tape that's keeping all that together. Yeah. A lot of Pocatello, Idaho pride. All right, so you can see uh, Rome and his team. And here we go with the second half of this battle. Rudy Hansen will lead Simon Olsen. Chasing him down. Let's see Rudy with the clean hair. I bet he's really going to throw it out there. Just Rudy going full tilt. Whoa! Oh, there he is. I told you he's going he's to back it in. And he comes up a bit short of the second outside zone, but now going into the third. Now into that final inside clip. Simon looked a little caught off guard on that yeah. final inside clip, but I, I think he was. Maybe, maybe startled a bit after that initiation going to that first outside zone. I mean, I mean, these guys are thrashing. Like I said, Rome said, look, we, this happened on Tuesday. They don't know if they have the right arms and suspension or they, enough, I should say, because this happened Tuesday. It took mm -hmm. them 45 minutes. Now they need to do it in 10. So I'm curious kind of if they still have their five on top of that. They might still get another five out of ah. 15 minutes is not a lot. No. All right, here we go. Slide him left for Olsen, right for Rudy Hansen. I think you know the outcome. There it is, the Norwegian driver, Simon Olsen, gets the win. Pass Rudy Hansen again. Rudy Hansen making the jump from prospect to pro. He is a pro rookie. The uh, highest finishing driver this event, because yeah, all, so uh, all the other prospect guys got knocked out. Mm -hmm. But uh, as far as rookies, Manoa is still in the mix. Saw him uh, obviously win earlier. But uh, we are we're getting through this. Yeah. We are, we are banging away, my friend. So we still need the second half of the talking about Rome, him and Taylor Hole, and that contact. We got Dean Carnage Carney just announcing a Hyper Society. All right, uh, here we go. Dean Carney, Hyper Society, talking about it. Car storage, white glove service. I mean, uh, had, had the pleasure to talk about it. What a what a cool vibe there. Check out Hyper Society. Be sure to follow them on uh, IG. Brand new storage facility. It's gonna it's gonna be pretty sweet. And uh, and there he is. He is uh, going against Robert Thorne. Robert Thorne, newly prepped vehicle. Uh, seems uh, just refreshed. He was. I saw him uh, in practice. He was thrashing, dude. Yeah. Every Rose has a Thorne, and Thorne is in his side. 
if you're if you're really into like cool vehicle design, go check it. Like take a look in his pits. What they've done with uh, it's basically a double firewall system behind them to direct air into the intercooler is is like really high level thinking. Sure. I nerded out. I, I was I was in there. I had my whole head in the car. I was trying to yeah. figure out what they were doing. So yeah, it really really neat. It's cool to see him in that. Finally has a, a non stock fuel tank. He ran a, a front mount rad and a stock fuel <laughs> tank last year. Um, and like a, Dean, that's like a 2010 build. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then Dean, right now, on the biggest tires that we've got in Formula Drift, the 355 Kumos, they're a direct replacement for the ACR Viper tire. Uh, the Kumos are a really cool design. I'm really interested to see how they start to perform in competition. Uh, it's going to take a little bit for the drivers to get into it, but uh, Dean seems to have, I wouldn't say mastered yet, but he is very much on, on the path to mastering these tires. Yeah, they are some serious hooks. So take a look at those things. Uh, the tires are wider than the actual wheels so. yeah yeah excited to see uh again new look new livery there for dean carney and the hyper society see what robert thorne's got robert thorne's got the smetagard racing asm Let's see uh here we go so dean carnage carney will lead that dodge viper initiates into that first outside zone coming into view Gets all the way out there. Looks like he taps the bumper. Recently, Robert Thorne. A little bit of a hiccup there in the second outside zone. Now in outside zone three. The Viper, the Fangs are out and sinks him into that final clip. Well, looks like Thorne gets right. Uh, he sticks his Thorne in that inside clip. Great lead run there from Dean Carnage Carney and the Hyper Society Dodge Viper. Liam Dorn, what'd you think of that run there, buddy? Oh man, the clock is ticking. So yeah, to your point, watch that clock. He might get an additional five on top yeah. of that 10. Yeah. He will. So we are getting confirmation there. He will get an additional five when that 10 expires. Make some noise for him. Dean Carney and Robert Thorne, the ASM Radium. Little big duck club out back. So you can see just how quick those Kumos are on that Viper. And Robert Thorne gets caught a little bit off guard. And you can see him scrubbing a bunch of angle to get there. Now, Dean did miss a good chunk of outside zone two with that because of how quick that car is, but makes up for an outside zone three, does a great job through our touch and go in our inner clip. But you can see here Robert Thorne scrubbing a ton of angle to get back in, and then Dean just rocket ships through this transition. Actually a little bit late on, it's incredible he was able to scrub the speed to get the car back around. So. Dean really coming into his own. I mean, we, we've always had conversations about him and the Viper. I think this is the pairing. You know, the tires, the build, you know, the, the sponsorship, everything, it's all coming together. All right, so, uh, yeah, t sorry, just uh, getting some updates here. So five minutes has started. So because the contact was caused by Taylor Hole, they, they said, okay, you get 10 minutes to uh, work on the vehicle. 10 minutes has now expired. Now he is utilizing his competition timeout, which is five minutes for RCP Rome Charpentier. So hopefully uh, that five minutes will help. Yeah, 15 minutes to do a 45 minute job. Yep. Where's the easy button? Mm. Here we go, Robert Thorne will lead again that ASM BMW. Made a lot of noise in pro spec and jumped up to pro and just the learning curve. And what I love about, Smet uh, excuse me, not Smetagard, but Robert Thorne is traditional racer gone drifting. So he's a good, good testimonial to like, look, yeah, you can race and drift, you can do it all. So really cool. Here we go. Dean Carter's trying to chase him down. Let's see what that Hyper Society Viper's got for the BMW of Thorne. There goes Thorne in the first outside zone. Dean Carney straightens up, has a very shallow line, but Robert Thorne maxes out that angle. And it looks like Dean Carney there in that chase position. He's on the center line. Unfortunately, you saw him initiate on, a, on that first outside zone. He was in close proximity, but when he went to the second, you see him take that shallow line and comes off of outside zone two. Yeah, so, you know, going back to years past, you'd be looking for a zero, but that is not going to be the case here. What we're looking for is, was Robert Thorne's lead run chaseable? He got on the power very late in initiation and then holds it almost too long. Now, Dean does go straight, has to reinitiate. Was it longer than two seconds? We start to get into some of these fun rules. Dean, again, having to reinitiate, but Robert's lead run was by no means perfect and had some really strange moments. So watch him come through here into three. Ton, a ton, a ton of angle. I cannot express that enough. But he was deselling in a zone that was not a decel zone. So the argument could be made that that was a non-chaseable run by the standards given by the judges through the track map. And that is why Dean had to pull that out of the car. You can see there, Dean did shallow up. He did reinitiate. The way it is written in the rule book right now, which anybody can download from the FD website if you want a clarification, 
is approximately two seconds. Now, yep. approximately is the main word there. Yep. It's not exactly two. It does allow for a bit of interpretation because uh, the idea is to not make this so stringent and, oh, this is a zero, that's a zero. But looks like the judges have their decision. All right, here we go. So slide him left for Carney, right for Thorn. We got a split decision, and Thorn! Thorn gets the win, two to one. Thorn in the ASM, BMW gets the win. Dean Carney and the Hyper Society Viper knocked out. So split decision there. And uh, yeah, I, I have to attribute those, that mistake. You know, like you said, angle, decel, all those things. But overall, I think just the straightening and, and not adapting mm -hmm. to what Thorne was presenting to him. Here we go, Ryan Turk and Connor Shanahan. A lot of buzz behind Shanahan coming over here. His brother just over my shoulder, he's in his ear telling him what to do. But Ryan Turk, he's got a new power plan. He's got six cylinders, not just four anymore. So Ryan Turk, he wants to get uh, on the box. And like Lorette said earlier, he won here a couple years ago in that Rain X Toyota GR Corolla. He's on Nitto tires. Again, shout out to Steph Papadakis and his family bringing a new baby into the fold. Another Papadakis family member. So. Uh, Hopefully everybody is uh, safe and sound. Shout out to Steph Papadakis and his family. Here we go. Ryan Turk out front at Reynes Toyota. GR Corolla initiates Connor Shanahan. The garage hits it. BMW transition now into that second outside zone. Ryan Turk possessed. Look at Shanahan. Oh. Ryan Turk taps the wall. Turk tapped the wall, or was that? Let, let's let's run that back. Yeah. Shanahan, Shanahan was, he knows who he's going against. I mean, this is like, this is literally like a kid's fantasy. He's like, I want to drift in the streets of Long Beach. I want to go against Ryan Turk. I want to have this weapon. Shanahan's fantasies are playing out. Yeah, this is this has got to be a fever dream to, uh, to Connor Shanahan. So we might need a couple more timeout clocks. Oh, look Whoa. at that. Wow. Oh, look at that. The garage is the BMW put together high fives oh. all around. Lorette was giving, yeah, you get chills there right now. Oh, there's there's Rome's dad cheering him on, the handlebar mustache man right there. Let's take a look at this again. All right, Ryan Turk lighting up those nittos right after initiation. Connor Shanahan giving him no room to breathe. Turk pushing that bumper into the wall through one, and then you see a ton of angle here as Turk starts to fire through. Gets yeah. off, and that rebound touched the front end of Connor Shanahan. So. Now we get into some fun, fun interpretation there. Turk did hit the wall. That would be considered a mistake. The repercussion of that mistake made contact with the chase vehicle. Now, we asked the chase vehicles to be as close to these lead cars as possible. Absolutely. Realistically, if Shanahan was actually a bit further back, it might be a different story. So it, it it's going to be interesting how we have to deal with this. I look at this as a big mistake from Turk. The repercussion of that was that Shanahan was had contact made. Turk does continue on through some of the run, Shanahan's not able to. And we are getting clarification here. I'm in informed that Ryan Turk is at fault. Okay. So Shanahan can get hands on the vehicle. Unfortunately, Turk, you know, with that hit and it being deemed his fault, that is going to be a deficit for him. So disrupts that chase car, not only just with the contact, but also the, the fluidity and the finishing of that run. So Ryan Turk, like I said, new power plants, uh, you know, same same Ryan Turk, but to obviously just like he says, gets wants to get better and better. Lorette Nickel with the updates here via text. She says, Rome, there was a bolt stuck on the Wise Fab kit, couldn't get it off, finally got it off, got it back together, threw it on, 38 seconds left, and now he pulls oh. it back out there. So Rome Sharpens here and his garageistic team back together and they will run. There's Ryan Turk. Looks like he's just heading back to Lun. And uh, yeah, no rest oh. for the weary. <laughs> All right, garageistic, back at it, go for it. Yeah, here you go, guys. All right, you just fixed Rome's car. Now let's let's take a look at Shanahan's car. And he was talking about, you know, his car, his setup, and uh, and what he's got. Look at Shanahan. He's ready to grab a ready to grab an impact. <laughs> he's he's ready to go. I mean, I, I, I've seen this family operate, and everybody puts hands on the car. Right. It's it, there is no just sit back and relax. It is we're all here to wrench. I mean. Jack's, Jack's already downstairs. Yeah, I don't know when he yeah. made it there. That's he's not a man. far. That's a far walk, that's man. A, that, that, that's a big man right there. He oh, we've got a D bead. Okay. So now, so Turk is at fault. This should allow Shanahan to be able to swap out those tires uh, because of that. Yeah. Now we're looking at that on the driver side when the contact was made. That's interesting. I don't really understand how that would have all come around if a D bead on that side of the car. But all right, so. Yeah, there's a lot of lot of things unfolding here, and, and Turk was ready to go, but I don't I don't know if he was not informed that uh, <laughs> Shanahan is not able to run. So yeah, that 
that D bead right there. So they should be able to use their timeout to be able to swap this out. Now, I think, yeah, Turk could get the same option, yeah. but... Uh, yeah, hey, with some action there, Lorette, what, what's it like down there in the pits? Uh, it's chaotic and insane, and Connor, what damage are you most worried about? Um, yeah, so as I hit him, I first hit him at the rear, and uh, yeah, they beat at the tower. Um, and then th I, was, I was trying to back out of it, because I knew he was gone super deep in, but it was my first time ever following a Corolla, so I didn't know like, actually how deep he was. But, you know, I, I knew something like that was going to happen, to be honest. My brother was watching him in practice a lot and said that he's on rails, that he's, he's going to be going for it. So we knew that we had a chance that he was going to make a mistake. So, um, yeah, I just got to try get the team to fix the car. And um, I've got good guys around me, and uh, that's the most important thing. Go back out, put down a solid lead, and, and hopefully take the win. Connor, thank you. Jared? Great attitude. You can see, you know, uh, a, c a controlled chaos, you know, no pun intended there, but you can just see, you know, like you said, just his attitude and, and talking, bigging up his brother and just talking about that inside. That's, that's yeah. all comes together for him. Yeah, great spotting there. I mean, Jack Shanahan, another absolutely phenomenal driver. Yep. In the in the Outer Zone podcast, they did talk about them potentially trying to get a full team over here, having both of them come over and drive, and I think that would be nuts. Jack is... Connor is very calculated. Jack is just, Luke I'm going to smash everything. <laughs> oh, it's, it's phenomenal to watch. All right, here we go with the second half of this battle. Taylor Hull and uh, RCP, Rome Charpentier, which you can see sans the bumper, get the thing back together. 38 seconds left, and their team is, uh, you know, put their back down. They're working on Connor's vehicle already. So here we go, the second half of this battle. We'll, I'm sure we'll revisit the first battle. All right, here we go. Let's take a look. All right, we are clear to send. And now it's Taylor Hull out front with RCP in the chase position. Lights extinguish and the comp cams met. That's a, another, the Intimidator. Livery design, pump camps, get a tires. And look at this, Taylor Hole pulling away from Rome Charpentier. Taylor Hole transitions under the bridge. And RCP, you know, that, that's the problem is when you change out the suspension parts, how much can you really trust for all those parts that they're set up? You don't want to ride off a car for the sake of, you know. Yeah, that, that would just yeah. be an unfortunate turn of events. It does look like Rome was driving with a non-optimal alignment. Um, yeah. I, I think is the best way to put it. I mean, yeah. you get everything back on the car. These teams are smart too. They'll preset a lot of stuff to make sure that when it bolts on, the alignment should be good. But there's a lot of things. I mean, you 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 get one shim in the wrong place. That's it. Your caster's way out. Car's not self-steering anymore. You're gonna run into a bunch of issues. Yeah. So it did look like he was fighting through all of that. But yeah. I mean, Rome's. If there's anybody to drive through a problem and just make it work, it's gonna be Rome. So that's what it felt like in this case. Um, just the, the car was not perfect. He was fighting it a lot. Um, Taylor out front did a pretty good job, but he is, you know, a little bit behind on it. So it's going to go to our judge's decision. Here we go. Slide him left for Rome Sharpentier, right for Hull. And RCP gets the victory and advances on. So after all that, they're going to thrash. And it looks like uh, they're, they're, they got it. They're dialed. They're put back together. So uh, congratulations. Jet Neff, thanks for coming out. Sean, thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. So now, now we get into this other thought-provoking thing. Where did Connor D beat? Yeah. Was it because of contact? Where was that at? And yeah. Because it was on the Elaborate driver's side. Jacob. Yeah, it was on the driver's side, which is interesting. He didn't make contact there. So what we're looking for is, did the car do something strange before then? Could it have been one of these e-brake pulls where you see the side skirt off? So it's really, really hard to tell, but it is possible that the tire actually de-beaded coming off of two and then that is why Connor started to slide into Turk and then the question becomes did Connor hit Turk before Turk hit the wall to then hit Connor yeah. so big domino effect here <laughs> I mean these these cars do run some pretty low tire pressure but look at you can start to see Connor over rotate a little bit and it seems like he may not have actually been able to get the car managed and wrangled back around to be able to come back through so it's a wild series of events. Everything happens super, super fast. I mean, it'd be great to have, you know, 100 cameras everywhere, everything in 120 frames so we can get perfect on everything. But it's just interesting to see a D-bead on the driver's side because there wasn't contact made there. Yep. All right. 
plot thickens. The plot thickens. We're stirring the pot here. Yeah. Taking a look. Like you said. There. You see the side skirt pop yeah, off. Yeah, he's dragging. Yeah. So, we just need 8K drones. I think that's it. That'll fix this problem. <laughs> yeah, it's just, that, just that simple. Cinema cameras just, on drones. Justin Smash, get on that. He is our... Yeah. <laughs> All right. Shanahan just uh, playing it cool right now, seeing uh, how this will transpire. So we're getting a lot of discussion going on right now between judges and staff, and I mean, even Ryan Sage is in on the discussion, yep. running through the rule book, making sure that we know exactly what the correct call needs to be. All right, so uh, after this, just, uh, just for clarification, Turk Shanahan, we still have um, Nick Novak, who will complete a run, but because he was scheduled to go against Bonkin Jr., who is not here in competition for this round. We're going to see him in Atlanta and Irwindale. That's what he's, uh, he's told me and been pretty open about that, doing two rounds. Um, so this is essentially our, our last battle and yep. what, what one it is. So um, we're going to have a heck of a halftime. I mean, we're filling up here. I'm pretty sure we're going to be sold out. Um, people still streaming in, and people know, you know, hey, some people just wait to the 16, some this, that, but we have a halftime break. I'm going to be over at the Type S booth giving out some stuff, so join myself, um, Larry Chen at 1 o'clock. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to let them wrench on cars, see what transpires. Jacob, don't go anywhere, okay? I'm not going anywhere. Don't, you right stay here. here. I'm, I'm sitting. You stay here. Can't, I can't miss you. Nope. Got this blue <laughs> beanie over here, the beanie boy. Don't go anywhere. It is. That's right. Type S, streets of Long Beach, Auto Zone. Let's party. Don't go anywhere. Is there an argument about whether pumice or walnut shell is the best abrasive in your hand cleaner? Not anymore. Fast Orange Premium brings the two abrasives together in one great heavy duty hand cleaner that includes advanced skin protection. It's our best hand cleaner ever and that's why we simply named it Premium. Fast Orange, we know a few things about cleaning hands. Welcome to the streets of Long Beach. Look at that. It is a beautiful day here in Southern California. k and is back for another year as the official air filter of Formula Drift. The final touch to my dream build is a Sony Mobile ES system. Time to cruise with Sony Mobile ES. On race day, when you want to show everyone out there who's the best. Here we go, Frederick Osborne. You really need to be focused. I tell myself, I got this. I'm the best in race. The star is Frederick Osborne. Formula Drift is brought to you by BC Racing, the official suspension of Formula Drift. Go for gold. Torque Drift 2, the official drifting game of Formula Drift. NGK Spark Plugs, the ignition specialist. Hello.
Hello everyone and welcome Top 32 here at Long Beach. Chris Forsberg right here and we are talking about this beautiful car here. Uh, how is your comfort level coming into Long Beach? Uh, it's great. We were doing really well media day, feeling really comfortable yesterday on our practice day and coming in today we made some small adjustments because the track temps are really low. Uh, course felt pretty loose. Everybody was kind of saying the same thing. So we started dialing it in to make sure we had enough grip for Adam in top 32. And yeah, he had a big mistake in the uh, chase run for him. And I actually saw it on the big screen as I was coming up the chute. I saw he was kind of half spun in turn one. I was like, oh, like surprising. So I just kind of just made sure not to tag the wall and zero myself out and clear the course. And we had a, a pretty solid um, run for a run two and just give him a good chase and got the win. So cloudy weather, are you already thinking about the adjustments you need to make moving forward? We do have a few more tricks that we can put into the car to find some more speed. We were watching Adam speed and felt that what we had was enough, and it did feel that way in our chase position. Uh, looks like we're going to be going up against Rome next. They did a great job getting that car back together, and so he got the win. So us versus Rome, and we'll just take a kind of peek on how he's doing and maybe make an adjustment from there. Okay. Chris, thanks so much. We'll see him in the top 16. Jared? Thank you so much, Chris Forsberg, and of course, thank you, Lorette, uh, the all-new Nismo Nissan Z, an off center drink. And here we are, Nick Novak, the Novak Racing, Kenda Tires, BMW. He gets the fast pass in the top 16. He said, this is the best I've felt in a car ever. Yeah. I see you know, it. It looks great. Yeah, it, it looks good. You know, he worked with, you know, Coral Works a few years ago, Jerry Yang last year. Now he's kind of running his own campaign. His sister's out there selling merch, and it's, it's a family affair. They, they have a good time. Nick, uh, very, very quiet, very yeah. quiet young man. You can get him. You can get him going. Yeah? Get him, yeah, I got it. him and I were back and forth a little bit this morning, so. Oh, you guys fought? Yeah, yeah. No, I Arm fight wrestling? Him. No, we were talking about hockey fighting, though. Actually. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> violent gentleman, baby. Yep, make, make hockey violent again. <laughs> Not against it. No, I know. I know you love the hockey. We got to go to Top Golf. We're going Top Golf, baby. All right. All right so this is uh, this is how. Look, th we got one more battle or half a battle left, and then we have halftime break. And uh, you know, let's. Uh, so look, Odie Bakshi's versus Sorensen. Yeah. Manoa, welcome, 14 years old versus Kazuya Taguchi. James Dean, three-time champion against a brand new Cadillac XLR of Jonathan Hurst. Frederick Osbo, he's hungry for it. New livery, the Rockstar livery, against Trenton Beecham, right? Then you got Matt Field versus Ken Gushi. Ken Gushi, the OG. Him and Chris Forsberg, the only day oneers. 21 years they've been around. Chris Forsberg, there he is, 21 years, banging away, three-time champion against RCP, who is banged, bruised, battered, but he's garageistic. And then you got Simon Olsen, who we just have seen just really come. He's like a Phoenix rising from the ashes. You got Robert Thorne in what you're calling a, a really well-developed, interesting, unique race car build. And then Nick Novak versus Connor Shanahan, brand new, Formula Drift Pro rookie, Drift Masters champion, one of the, the pride of Ireland, or Ryan Turk, who absolutely is, uh, is All-American, just turned 40 years old earlier this week. We partied at the Pike Bar, and uh, we're gonna keep on partying. So. Thoughts, questions, comments, concerns? Uh, great. I mean, a lot of concerns. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for a top 16, this is this is great. Such a mix of young and old and new and established and, and just, you know, it's, it's. I don't know. I mean, I've yeah. run through brackets over and over again, and this is not what I built. This is not what <laughs> I thought it was going to be, and I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. I don't. I don't want it to be predictable. I mean, we talk about anything can happen, and that's what we're yeah. seeing here. A couple of variables come in, a Manoa and a Shanahan, and everything you thought you knew about how the bracket was going to go just disappears. So that's, that's you know, that's the best part of the sport. And now you can start to make predictions into next year, especially as we start to fill these drivers. Wait, you're or not next, next year? Next event. Next Holy event. cow. I'm thinking about next year already. I want to start it. This is round one. We I got, we got seven more to go. I'm a, I'm a futurist. <laughs> All right, so yes, all joking aside, round one here, Long Beach. It ends in October, Irwindale, October 18, 19th. We will crown a 2024 Formula Drift Pro Champion, and prior to that, we will have a Prospect Champion. Hey, you need some rubber underneath you? Well, guess what? Discount Tire and Service Centers. You buy two tires, get two tires free on select tires. They are an official sponsor, so check it out. Go by the booth for an extra 10% off. Oh my gosh, just giving them away. Uh, not literally, but Discount Tire and Service Center, thank you so much for their support. And again, buy two tires, get two tires free on select tires. 
All right, so again, here is our season schedule. We are obviously here in Long Beach, California, Atlanta, May 9th and 11th. Oh, that's where the red dirt meets the asphalt of Road Atlanta. Been going there since day one, since 2004. I mean, we've seen families change. We've seen my hair get grayer. You know, Ryan had hair when we started, and now he doesn't. Orlando, Florida is round three. That's sweaty and ready to party out there. Orlando Speed World, E-Town, right? I mean, the Nat Boys, just talking about them. The first ever purpose-built drift collar see him that is going down june 20th through the 22nd and ooh, talk about getting sweaty and ready st louis missouri woof it's it's hot out there but the track is even hotter that's july 18th through the 20th seattle washington which has really grown to probably be one of my top three favorites i love the track the asphalt is just like it's like five grit sandpaper you burn through the tire the stadiums i don't know i don't know how the bleachers are standing because we get the fans to stomp their feet we sell it out <laughs> every year i love seattle um and then you love Utah. You love, love Utah. Yeah, Utah Motorsports Campus. There we go. Oh, look at that. You got, you got, you got a Utah the, tattoo, man. You got the Utah uh, landscape. And then finally, October 18th, 19th. That's my birthday, and I won't tell you how old I am. You can look it up on the internet. But October 19th, we're going to party. Irwindale, California, the house of drift. So we uh, local time, 2.30 Pacific Standard Time. That's the round of 16 national anthem opening ceremonies. The United States Air Force, thank you for their support of our series. That's going down at 2.30. So again, uh, thank you to all those joining us here. We're seeing Shanahan and Turk over there on the line. They're really elaborating about tire debeating, what went down. So you're gonna have ample time to cruise the pits, come hang out at Type S, high fives and handshakes, go by the pits, because with the price of admission, you get complimentary access to the pit area. So don't go anywhere, 2.30, but while we wait to see what goes down, k and the official air filter of Formula Drift. Here's a little piece, thanks to k and for their support. Um, Jacob, we're a little, little low on the action here to finish out the ha second half of this battle. You're talking to judges. I'm kind of, we're, we're tiptoeing up here and dancing. Yeah. What, what's going on? Okay, so the discussion that's happening upstairs right now, and this is everybody. We got spotters, we got judges, we got yeah. everybody talking about it, is did Connor's tire DB before the incident? And there's a lot of things that, that have to play with this. Um, you know, whether they can touch the car, if, if Turk can go in and change tires, all of that has to play with this scenario. We cannot at this time definitively say whether or not that tire debeated. Now, if the tire... Prior, prior to the contact. Correct, yeah. The tire debeat did debeat on the driver's side, which doesn't necessarily make sense because the contact was on the passenger side. But we have seen it in previous times where contact is made there, and then you see the, the body shift and it debeats the tire. So this is what we're looking at. There's a couple indications that maybe why you see the car drop a little bit, and you'll see it. It's after outer zone two where we're looking. The camera will swap to the rear end, and you should be able to see it. Um, but there's no definitive spot where we can say the tire did debeat. You just see how Connor's car is just holding angle in a non-gripped way, right? Normally when they come off the throttle, that car will start to grip up, and you can tell. So we're looking at a lot of the drone to understand, and, and the repercussions of this are you know, is he using his five minute timeout to swap a tire, which you can do. It is in the rule book that if you DB'd and you have a five minute timeout, you can call it and swap the tire. So this is where we're looking. Watch for the side skirt of Connor and watch the rear end dip. You say the side skirt drops because, or basically it falls off because he's actually making contact because the car is sitting now on, on a wheel as opposed to right. rubber in the air. But it's, it's so hard to say. We can't quite tell from here if it did DB'd or if it DB'd after they made contact, which could also be the possibility. So. 
there's just so much back and forth. There's so many different discussions as to is this enough evidence to prove it? Because it's not like we can zoom right in, you know, and hence, and hence, and hence, and see that tire come off. So we're getting into um, a bunch of different discussions as to who's incompleted. You know, is is it a major correction? What is it? How does it fall in? And a lot of it has to do as well with the new rule book. So we're all learning. Yep. We're all learning right well, now. It, it, just all these incidents, and you know, I always say it. After every F1 race, there's usually about a couple addendums because yep. of new things transpire with technology, aero, tires. Uh, I mean, we've seen that. I mean, people got fired because of incidents in Formula One, right? So, yeah, and, and I know you're kind of hearing both these guys talk about, you know, okay, Turk, is it, is it incomplete, the contact, all that thing, and, and something yeah. so seems cut and dry, it doesn't doesn't seem it's such. Yeah, every rule's got a story. That's how I look at it. If you look through that rule book, every rule's got a story behind it, and I think we're going to see an addendum after this event because of this incident. Yeah. So. No, we're, we're, right. we're, we're talking to uh, Ryan Sage, president of Formula Drift and elaborating with the four judges, you know, between Reese, Brian, Vernon and Robbie discussing with Jacob and myself and uh, and Ryan. Yeah. And uh, we we got cars. So we have a second half of this battle. And uh, this, we, this we may not even need this discussion. Right. Something else might happen where we go. Oh, OK. Definitive where it's it's done. It's over. Yep. So um, the one of the arguments is even if he did DB, you can still finish around. We've seen guys run on yep. one tire before. Yep, absolutely. And again, Turk, Turk, you know, Turk had the mistake regardless, so he, he went the wall. So here we go. Shanahan now has oh. Is that a restart? I don't know. It looks like Chris, is that a restart? Okay, Thank it you. is a restart. Ooh. All right, so. Heart attack uh, avoided. Jump, jump the light or hit a cone? All right, so there was, a, there was a cone hit on that start chicane. So the cones that are there, just for those that aren't knowing, we, we, we instituted the start chicane because we don't want to drag race and people pulling away from each other. So the lead car has to navigate through the cones to kind of slow them up so the chase car can leave before the lead car leaves first. But you have to uh, navigate through those cones. So a cone was hit. So uh, three strikes, you're out if you hit three times, you'll lose. So uh, just don't hit the cones. So unfortunately, Shanahan did hit the cone. We restarted them, re rack them and track them. Here we go, Shanahan, the Irish boy, the pride of Ireland. A lot of people watching from Ireland right now, cheering him on. Oh, what is that a second one? Jump the oh, oh, boy. two strikes. Oh, that is no. two strikes. We've only seen it twice where you have three strikes and you're out. <laughs> is his brother has some strong words for him, but his radio is not working right now, so he can't tell him to uh, calm down. Yes. So simmer, simmer down now. Simmer down. I don't know now. if those are the exact words he used. No, I think it was more Something, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a family show. It was, it was in Gaelic. I couldn't understand it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I mean, here we go. He's got to be, there's going to be some nerves here. Yeah, just chill. Yeah. Just I, chill, Shanahan. I mean, this that would... It would only make sense if, if he got three strikes. I'm, I'm, I'm only laughing because uh, things like to. that do happen. So here we go. Shanahan does have two strikes against him. He hit the cone on the first one as a restart. He jumped the light on the second one. And now Shanahan will lead. Wait till they extinguish. Don't hit a cone. Hey. It looks like we got a clean start. Here we go. Shanahan out front. Garagistic. BMW got the Red Bull on the side. The Rain X Toyota GR Corolla. Ryan Turk. Shannon goes hard into the paint in that first wall. In his second outside zone, Ryan Turk has a major progression. Look at that back bumper. Thrashing and bashing into the third outside zone. Now to that final inside clip. Ryan Turk goes. He needs to apply the pressure. Brings it on home. Almost has contact. Makes a noise for Ryan Turk. And Connor Shanahan put it down. America versus Ireland. BMW versus Toyota. And a FD rookie against Ryan Turk. What do you got? All right. Shanahan, big fan initiation getting into it. Let's see how deep they go into first outside zone. Just grazing at both of them. Phenomenal, phenomenal transition there. And then Turk gets into the wall a little bit in outside zone too. Keeps the run going. Great chase job from Ryan Turk. And that is because Shanahan out front looks phenomenal. I, I, I love the way that Shanahan drives and, and Turk adapted to it. I mean. His, his spotter, Turk's spotter, told him exactly what was going on. There was a big correction there from Ryan Turk coming off of outside zone two. Looks like he caught the wall just a little bit too hard, and that's what caused the car to straighten out a little bit. And then almost, touch, uh, almost touches his front wheel.
to the rear wheel. So I think we're going to flip back to the first run replay so we can take a look at that again. Because um, what I want to see here, and I was discussing earlier, is even though Turk did hit the wall, he did finish his run. So if he didn't straighten for more than two seconds, or approximately two seconds, and didn't have like a 180, so we go... It... So... Ryan Sage and I have been arguing back and forth, been arguing with my boss already about, <laughs> <You're fired. laughs> about how this all works. And and it's it is. It's a it's an interesting discussion because yeah. it's the first time we're seeing this part of the rule book being utilized, which yeah. is that what is now an incomplete is very difficult to incomplete. Ryan, in my opinion, did finish off that run, but did it did that contact cause Connor to not be able to finish off that run? Oh man, and our judges are about as stressed as you would expect. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You just this is this is what we anticipate. This is it's why they're paid the the big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, we are again really uh, elaborating on what what's going down here. Do we have a victor? Connor Shanahan, welcome to Formula Drift. It's an interesting turn of events here, but we will have a halftime break if we have a verdict here and. We're back here for two. All right, slide him left for Turk, right for Connor Shanahan. There's one and a two. Connor Shanahan gets the win on his maiden voyage in Formula Drift Pro Championship. Ryan Turk knocked out early in that Rain-X Toyota GR Corolla Nitto tires. There's RCP, Rome Charpentier. He's psyched because uh, Rome is in the mix. He's going to go against Forsberg. So, uh, Jacob, wow. top 32. It's already, it's already going down. I'm yelling timber. No, I'm yelling send it. That's right. So there you go. Shanahan's got to be stoked. His brother's going to have some words with him. He's going to slap him around a little bit and uh, say, don't get those strikes anymore. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's, yeah. Hey, uh, real quick, Reese, throw your headset on for me. Let's, uh, let's talk about that real quick. We got, we got a moment here. So, uh, yeah, let's get some, get some clarity here for everybody at home. I mean, Sometimes I wish we could just record all the crazy right. discussions up here. Yeah, yes and no. Yes and no. Reese, well, you came to that conclusion. How so? You're good. So we ended up coming to the conclusion. Um, it, it was a hard battle to go back and forth and see all the details. Um, but at the end, you know, we went with uh, comparing the leads. Uh, we saw that there was a hit that went on to uh, when Tarek was in the lead. Hit, straightened up. And then when we looked at Connor's lead as well, too. A lot better. Yep. We know that there's a lot of other things that went on in the mix, but ultimately, you know, we go with our standard, and it was a hard uh, battle to go through. But and if Shanahan wasn't there, Turk hit the wall. So like, just, just don't do that. That yeah, yeah, that yeah. in in my eyes, like, look, you messed up. Yeah. And, and regardless of hitting Shanahan, and regardless of the D beat, he was in that chase position. If Shanahan wasn't there, say he was even further back, and you brought up that point earlier, Jacob. If he was further back, it wouldn't have been an issue, right? right? And maybe maybe D beat, maybe not TBD. We'll yep. never know. We'll never know. But Turk hit the wall. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Story. Yeah, that's what it went. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Reese. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Vernon. Thank you, Jacob. Let's throw it down to Lorette. Nickel, Lorette, what's cooking? Connor, as soon as you drove in, I just saw you shaking your head. Was that out of disbelief? Uh, no, belief more than anything. <laughs> um, that was messy. I wish it could have been cleaner. Like, we could have definitely been one of the battles of the day, I think. Uh, the first run, it is what it is. I'm not sure exactly what happened, even on my side, to be honest. Um, just unfortunately that he went in and um, you know I we were trying to analyze as much as we could in practice and I kind of had an idea that he was going to overdo it. My lead run I didn't know what, what anyone was thinking so I just said okay this has to be at least if I get knocked out a statement lead run and uh, I think it was quite good you know outer zone one, outer two, outer three right to the end and uh, the feeling is good but the want is there for sure and I just got to get my head back in the game I was a little bit distracted there and um, yeah the fight is on for sure. Okay, What were you distracted by? I just, there was a lot of confusion when we came in about who got the competition timeout and we didn't know who was at blame or, or what they were thinking. So, um, you know, that was playing in the back of my mind and, um, you know, I just tried to do everything as I could just to stay calm and make sure that I was in my first FD main show. Right. And in our first interview, I heard you say that you hit Ryan. Was that because of a mistake you made or did you capitalize on a mistake he made? Uh, no, when I hit Ryan, he was fully in the wall. Like I could see him going in deep and out of tree. So I had to start backing back. Um, so I knew he was going to go in, you know, uh, for sure. So, yeah, when I made contact, for sure, uh, well, on my side, there was nothing I could do. I had to hit him. There was no way out of it. So it is what it is. I wish it could have been cleaner, but the year is young. I'm sure we'll battle again, and I look forward to it. But now we just look what's ahead of us and take it one step at a time. Okay. 
Connor, thank you very much. And Jared and Jacob, can you guys feel the energy down here? It Absolutely. Is incredible. No, coming off of you. You're, you're just like I'm glowing. Too. I'm so excited. I know I'm you so are. I'm so happy. I know. Well, it's great to see you again, Lorette. Missed you. Um, we saw each other during the off season, but thank you so much for contributing and doing what you do, homegirl. Thank you so much. Darling. All right. Well, there it is, 2.30 local time. Jake McGinnis, myself, Lorette, and top 16. We're going to find out who's going to win here on the streets of Long Beach. Again, you got a little bit of time, so grab a meal, grab a drink, grab a good time. Let's send it, 2.30 local time. I'm going to head down to the pits. Let's keep the party going.